And you are watching another Blewitz Blitz film review. He has that ability to, trust me, he definitely does. Just his ability to catch balls outside of his frame, his leaping ability, his ability to hang in the air, his yak ability, it's, it's, it's all there. Lowers his helmet, low man wins, bang, rocks the guy. Hall running free, Reese Hall inside the 10, he's gonna score! The, the corners all do their job. You know, if you look at the if you look at the picture right here, lock, lock, lock. Third and one. Dude, it's always drilled. What a great defensive play. I don't try to Monday morning quarterback any of the reviews I do, and I'll try to be honest with a lot of those things I, I put up. And you are watching slash listening to another edition of Blue It's Blitz. Um, I see Ben in here already with the New Jersey. Obviously, a lot has happened in the last week or so. Um, just promoting Ben right here. I went on to their stream or not their stream, their podcast. I believe is that Friday or was that last week? I believe that was last week. I was on Cool Your Jets. Uh, and then I was also on Rivka's podcast, unless that was two weeks ago. And I'm just starting to lose my mind. Um, but plenty uh, upcoming. Six days until the draft, New Jersey's came out. A little bit of like draft nuggets and news and some things around the Jets. Um, also have a ton of uh, podcasts that I'm going on this week too. So if you're into other podcasts or you want to watch the other podcast, uh, up to you. If, if this is just your cup of tea, then also cool. <laughs> but um, but uh, I'm going on Jake Asman or uh, Asman tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. with Jake. I'm doing Sunday with Connor. Uh, I believe it's NY Jets Flight Talk, right? Um, Sunday night after that is Dom C. And then Monday night is um, Let's Talk Jets. So if you guys are looking for some other content and looking for me around other places, uh, Jake, Tyson, Connor, and Dom C. I'm going on their podcast uh, all this week. And then I was on the stream with uh, or on the, uh, on the uh, podcast with Clear Jets as well last Last Friday, last Saturday, whatever, whatever day it was, the days are all starting to mush together. But a lot to talk about, or somewhat so, decent amount to talk about. Um, I'm gonna do my big board today. I'm gonna give you my my official big board of just players in general, and I'm gonna give you my Jets big board. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about some of the Jersey stuff. I'm not the big like, I, no, I don't want to say that. I am a huge Jersey guy, but in terms of like formulating uh, coherent sentences around, about why I like the Jersey, may be a little bit different. Um, but I do. I ordered an Aaron Rodgers. Kind of regretting the white decision, not going to lie. Uh, not, the, not the white decision, the Aaron Rodgers decision. I'm hoping that it pays off, that he is a, he's a, he is the quarterback to bring the Jets to the promised land within the next two years, and this jersey is going to be gold for the rest of my life. I was kind of sitting there like, hmm, make me, I, maybe I should have got like Brees Hall or Jermaine Johnson in white. Um, but I'm with Aaron Rodgers in white, which came, I think, like five days later. Um, and I think it was my last stream where I was telling you guys, like, I – like I, I, I teeter totter between being like, okay, I'm 31 years old. I shouldn't be buying jerseys. And at the same time, like I'm a super fan and the jerseys are awesome. So I want to buy the jerseys. So, uh, I got a white, um, got a white AR. I got the green sauce. Uh, my, I, the old black sauce that I have has the actual word sauce in the back. This one has gardener, uh, but it's green. I figured this dude's going to be here for hopefully 10 years. Uh, get two of his jerseys. Obviously want to rock him in green as well. Uh, and then I got the Garrett Wilson five black. I, I could not stop myself, <laughs> you know? So that's, that is what it is. Um, but they look nice. I like the stripes. Um, I like the different color green. I think some people are, are having some issues with like no patch of the Jets or anything like that. I, I think it's fine. It is what it is. It's very simple. It's very nice. It's very classic. I like that they stuck with like the darker hunter green type deal instead of going going to like a Kelly green. I don't love the Kelly green, um, but I like the logos. So I, I like the green that they're, they're at now. Really like the black. Uh, really like the 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 greens on whites. I actually think they're probably the best uh, the, the best jersey combo. Um, and then I think we have a, another option for a third helmet as well. And the third helmet I'm hoping is just white on white. I do like the white face mask, but uh, that's that's again I don't want to get too much into jersey talk because people will lose it. But very, really really nice. We expected it April 15th, right? So that was like four days ago that they came out. Um, and this got here literally three days. So kudos to to the Jets shop. Uh, for getting in here, even though the prior time I tried to order a Rogers jersey, it was like four, four months. But get into the chat. Um, something I actually want to throw out in uh, the YouTube sphere. Uh, I'm gonna try call-ins. So I, I talked about you guys about this last week, or I talked to myself, and you guys are just watching me talk to myself. But 
uh, I said that I'm going through a four week rotation now. That's what that's where the show is going to be directed towards. Just because I don't, you know, I think some people like the solo stuff, but every single week I get it. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna rotate Sabo, Nania, maybe one other person in the future. We'll we'll see about that. But for now, it's gonna be Nania, Sabo, Colin, Solo, and then we're just gonna rotate every four every four weeks. Um, I was thinking about doing call-ins today. If you guys wanted to, um, if, if you guys are going to call in, I'll definitely do it. If there's going to be no interest, I don't want to do it because I don't want to be sitting here like, oh, somebody call in. Um, but I'll put it I'll put it in the chat. I'll, I'll see if there's any response to to calling in in a, in a little bit. And if there is, then then we'll do it. If not, we will do it uh, next Friday. That's when we'll start doing some some call-ins. But let me get into the YouTube chat real, real quick on my side over here. Uh, Blue It's Blitz on YouTube. Okay, where are we at? Actually, here, I'll say hello to some people first. I'll do that. Eagle Fang or some chats. Uh, Neighbors, Marvin Harrison Jr., Joe Alt, Olu, and Odunze is my top, but the top three is all I would be excited about. Uh, hmm, Yeah, okay. Uh, Yeah, I'm a little bit different there. Um, Neighbors is not above Harrison Jr. for me right now. Now, uh, again, transparently, I have to go back and watch him a little bit more, but Sneakers of Boots says Odunze is the only option i'd like otherwise trade down and hopefully uh can grab latham or fatano if possible um yeah it's like at 10 it is like this i know the the smart part of me does like i'm I'm rooting for latham um again the the smart part of my my brain where i'm thinking logically okay get the tackle you know he's gonna play six or seven games he's the long-term guy um but even though a guy like latham is above odunze in my actual like rankings of who i like better as a player um, I'd rather see Odunze there for just the end, the, the, the ceiling of what it could be, even though I like um, a guy in Latham more than Odunze. So I definitely get the 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 weapon thing. And that's why I even understand Bowers. Again, I know people are going to say I hate Bowers, all that stuff. They'll see on the big board. He's like my sixth or seventh player. So uh, again, it's not a hate thing. It's just I don't prefer him at 10, you know, but mid-teen, mid-teens, trade down to the 20s and he's there, like slam dunk pick. Um, it's not an Evan Neal thing. It's nothing like that. It's just I have questions about the guy. And uh, my first uh, appearance on, on Jake's show tomorrow, I'm going to be breaking down Bowers' film. So I'm sure that's going to go well. <laughs> you know, I'm sure people are going to, people who are not exposed to me um, before, where I'm, you know, either talking positively or negatively about Bowers. I'm sure it's gonna, it's gonna go great. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Odunze is is the real, like, most realistic option at ten where I would be excited as well. Sneakers to boots. I'm, I'm, I'm there with you. Uh, Wild wave. What is up? Look at the jersey. Yes, your voice of reason. Thank you. Uh, thank you to you as well, Matt, for being here. Blake says I'm still uh, camp draft Latham or tackle in the first. Not only do we need tackle uh, three this year, but we need tackle one, two, and three next year. While, yeah, no, um, it makes it, it again. It makes sense for wanting the tackle over the the receiver. It's just about your your philosophy. And do you think that the Jets can get over the hump, get over the Kansas City Chiefs in the playoffs with? potentially you know a guy you drafted at 10 sitting on the bench you know so even though latham may be the better player in the long term let's say at 10 does does he impact the game as much as odunze would now i get the argument of okay well you might not even get to the super bowl if you don't have a healthy offensive line i completely get that and that's why it's a philosophy thing i don't think um I, there's there's no right side to this um again I, I think people like to do the whole you know black white thing there's no gray in the middle um you either want a guy like there's you you know you can't have any substance to the conversation about like okay well you know i prefer weapon but i also understand offensive line and that's got kind of where i am um understand offensive line want the weapon uh to me i'm i'm still looking to trade up like that's that's my number one uh thing i i'm rooting for the jets to do I know that people will talk about you know draft picks and all this stuff, but again, I think if you could put an absolute slam dunk player next to Garrett Wilson and Mike Williams with Conklin and Brees, uh, this offense can really take off. And then again, you you sign the, those depth tackles. Now, yes, are we concerned about the team in twenty twenty five in that in that scenario? Yeah, but hopefully you could resign these guys to similar deals you did this year. You know, um, and if you can't, then get some more. You know stopgap players doesn't sound like it's the it's the best long-term building plan but i'm kind of operating on a one or two year plan um and it could be one like listen if the jets go into the wild card playoffs and they get they get eliminated and it's not the cleanest of years it, it could all blow up you know rogers could could retire you know uh joe can get fired sala can get fired so i'm operating on like a, a year by year plan with that being now with that being said i'm not gonna just say completely blow up the future i'm not trying to trade all of the picks from next year but at the end of the day if it's like neighbors and you're trying to get up to six 
six and it's going to cost you like a second and a fourth next or a, a next year, second and a fourth this year for a guy who I think is a bona fide stud receiver um, coming into the in, in, into the NFL level, then I'm willing to do it. Again, a lot of those picks in the fourth, third round are, are dart throws. Um and that's that's assuming you're a shitty dart player too, because those hit those those hit like 15, 20, 25 percent of the time, you know. So six this these next six days had to hurry up. Yeah, uh, sneakers and boots they do. They they definitely need to hurry up. Uh, the days are dragging right now. Today was actually my Friday, so now I have two days off to catch up on some house stuff. But uh, yeah, the the days are definitely dragging to the draft and just seeing all the arguments on Twitter and all of that. It's absolutely wild. Um, the one thing I was going to say too, is by the way, which I didn't do, and I'm not even going to do it tonight. I was thinking about doing it. I think maybe I should do a mock draft tonight. And then I look back, I'm like, I don't think I did a mock draft the entire off season, which is kind of awesome because everybody just humps mock drafts. Literally. Um, I think the, uh, I guess you can technically count. I did the off season simulator. That was more to promote jet X's, you know, off season simulator, which was fun. Um, but no mock drafts here by the way. So, uh, it's, it's just, it, I think they're so unrealistic really. Um, the, the, Trade down options exactly how it I think is kind of just stupid. So it's really it's it it's an exercise that's kind of fun, but realistically, they don't mean anything. You know, they don't mean anything. Um, let me find uh, the chat real quick on my side of the computer, and I'm gonna put something on the chat to see if you guys would want to do call-ins, maybe from like seven to eight or something like that. Uh, if you guys are interested, let's see. Uh, ba ba call. Okay, I think we're back. I think, I think we're back. Um, I reconnected my Wi-Fi. Yeah, I think we're back. Tell me if we're having trouble. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to go back to the bottom of the chat. I apologize, guys. That's something I have to figure out before Jake tomorrow. I don't want to start lagging in the middle of his show. Are we back? I think we're back. I don't know. We're going to keep going in the chat. If we're not, I'm talking to myself. Is that a Brock Bowers jersey he picked out on Monday at one Jets drive? I think that the I think there's absolutely no correlation between the Jets bringing in Brock Bowers and him visiting and 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 uh and the jets new uniform release and aaron Rodgers walking to the building i think i think we're being a little bit uh crazy now i don't think we're reacting to a lot of news it's like oh my god it must have been on purpose like we're trying to recruit a guy that we're going to be able to draft if he's there regardless if he wants to play here or not you know i don't i don't know six jersey yeah um i kind of i don't know again i kind of i kind of regret that i didn't get a breeze but the problem with priest is and i was talking to some people it's like by the time most running backs i'm not gonna say breeze but most running backs play out their third, fourth year, get tagged for the fifth, maybe the sixth, and they're kind of gone. If I had to bet, is, is Brees Hall here in, in his year seven of his NFL career? career? Probably not. You know, so do you buy it? So you're going to say the same thing about Rodgers. He's going to be gone in two years, Joe. Well, I am buying a Super Bowl winning quarterback's jersey. He's going to win on the Jets. You know, that's that's what it is. And I hang it up and right, right back about here, and then we're good. And then we're good, which I am hanging something back up there. Uh, I'm working with Steve right now. Steve, you know who you are. Uh, we're trying to work on what, what's going to go back there. But we're making slow progress here. We got the helmet. We got the green light. We got the we got the Jets thing. We got the, the sign. You know, before we were just in a room with a fan. So progress. Uh, Jersey is clean. Green sauce. Yeah, I kind of wanted to be like, I, I wanted to get green and have sauce on it on the back as well. But it's like an extra... I don't even know, 60, 70 bucks to customize it like that. I was like, ask for it. Like, I'll get a sauce. I'll have a gardener, you know. Um, and yeah, I think he's going to be here for 10 years. So I don't I don't think it's something that you have to worry about getting sauce this year. It's a pretty safe purchase. Um, I want to get a green breeze, but worried about the – yep, see, exactly. Exactly what I was just talking about. I'm 58, and I buy a jersey in the players on uh, on another team the following year. I'm f- Tony, the GM, I buy a jersey and the players on another team the following – oh, 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 okay. I get what you're saying. I was like, why do you buy jerseys of players on other teams? I'm just an idiot, an idiot, a little bit tired. Um, yeah, it sucks, man. Like, you got to be careful. Uh, I, I've definitely, 
I just I just bought three jerseys. I'm not gonna say I learned my lesson. Like I bought a Le'Veon Bell jersey, like such an asshole. And that was after I was saying I didn't really want him because he doesn't fit with the offensive line and stuff. And I still bought it just because the Jets never had superstars. Um, but it's stupid. It's it, it's it's pretty stupid. Uh, Green winning search for it. Yeah, I didn't see a lot of Quinn jerseys, which is quite surprising considering he's the second best player, third best player on the roster. I don't know exactly where you uh, where you place him in terms of. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Elon Abitzel, uh, enjoy your evaluations. However, I will never agree with you on Latham. He would get absolutely destroyed by speed rushers. Um, I would rather him play guard than tackle. That's fine. We can disagree. Um, I don't think that he played that he's slow though. Like I, I did a review and he has plenty of explosive. He's, he's he's plenty explosive for his side. He has plenty of lateral ability or agility. He can he can stop redirect move inside he has good re- redirect of balance um he's not becton like he's not 370 it's not like he can't move laterally i think a lot of latham's problem in terms of him you know getting beat inside and people you know attributing that to him not being able to move back inside is is more so him getting a little bit clunky in in, in the contact window in terms of his heels clicking and then he also has some times where he oversets but in terms of him not being able to move i just don't think that's true uh, i don't you know, because he he can get out of his stance, he can move laterally. There's plenty of plays that I that I have of him where he does adjust well to the inside. So I think people just see big Becton. Becton got beat inside. Becton Becton big. Becton bad. Latham big. Latham bad. Like that's I really think that's what it is because he can move, um, which is fine. We can disagree. Um, but again, in the in the review, I, I I show 65 plays of him. I'm sure there are plenty of him moving well. So I don't think it's a thing where he can't move well. It's but why is he getting beat inside? You know, is it is it movement? Because I didn't see I didn't see movement. I saw I saw more of sloppiness with his feet clicking or his heels clicking and um and a little bit of oversetting, but I didn't see lack of movement skills with him. So uh we need a Kyle Smith episode. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Uh isn't neighbors Wilson? No, they're not. Um I think just because like they're both explosive and run routes means they're the, they're the same player um they're different wilson was much more like he's much more like unorthodoxly like like almost um like explosive like unorthodoxly explosive where neighbors is more like cons- con- condensed concise explosive more acceleration faster um really good yak but wilson's a little bit different um, he's a little bit more like he's, he's short, but he's like more like Gumby. Like how he moves, he's very, very unorthodox. There's really, there's really not many players that I can tell you like, okay, Garrett Wilson is like this guy because he's so different in how he runs routes and stuff like that. Um, that I've really never seen much like him. Not saying that he's the best ever or anything like that, but he's, he's a very unorthodox player. Um, this is not not the same player. I get like the size thing. Okay, they're both good at yak. They're both explosive, but there's so much more to football than just take. Hey, you know, they're the same size and similar, similar, uh, you know, agility. So I feel JD will be aggressive and get one of the big three, talk about the big three receivers. That's where I'm at. Um, I prefer, listen, like I talked about it last week. I know people are going to go crazy about the Marvin Harrison Jr. thing and trading up. Some people don't want to do that. I think that's, that's a move. If you think that, you know, a Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be a Jamar Chase, a Julio Jones level prospect. If you add that, to what we have this year and and assuming that he's going to be one of those prospects he's really good this year you're looking at a guy who can you know he's a better prospect than garrett wilson garrett wilson got what uh 1100 yards in his rookie year and now obviously the balls to be spread out and things like that but you had a player who's an even better prospect than garrett wilson was coming out um he's, he's honestly in terms of prospects leaps and bounds above where, above where he was um so you add that to the to the to the offense, and now it's Garrett, it's him, it's Mike Williams, it's Conklin. Like I know people are obsessed with draft picks, but if that if that draft pick is is thirty two next year, what are the chances that you know this player at ten and I don't know next and, and next year's thirty second player are, are as valuable as Marvin Harrison Jr. If he really is one of those players, it's obviously uh, pretty slim. But now that's well, I can't guarantee that he's going to be chased or anything like that. But if you have enough conviction, you really think he is that good, then okay, I'm I'm completely fine with that getting him um, i'm not a guy just like new, like uh just mortgage future draft picks who gives a crap um but we're also in a little bit of a different circumstance here you know it's it's we have a year or two window realistically we do and unless we're going to say that hey the jets can work out all these contracts we draft a stud quarterback okay yeah then, then maybe but i haven't been living in that world for 20 years so in the world of realism uh, at least based off of off of expectations in the last 20 years uh we have a two-year window so if you want to trade a, a, a next year's first round draft pick to get a guy who's going to be julio jones Again, Julio Jones. 
do it. If you if you want to trade a second round pick next year and a fourth for a guy who I think would be the number one receiver in most of the last ten classes, or, or, or most of the drafts in the last ten classes in late neighbors, okay, do it. You know, it's a situation where you're at you know you're at the, the picks at ten and Odunze is there, and you want to trade a fourth round pick this year to get up two spots to get Odunze. Okay, do it. Like I, I am, I am so okay with that. Uh, now I know people prefer. Okay, maybe you just hit a ten, and then it's a conversation. Okay, does Odunze fall? Is it Bowers? I definitely prefer Odunze to Bowers, and I prefer Odunze enough above Bowers where I would be willing to trade a fourth round pick. You know, Odunze giving up a fourth or just Bowers? Give me, give me Odunze for the fourth round pick. So I, I, I think I agree with you all the way, but I'm not. I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure if maybe they just like Bowers. Like, there's been so much smoke about it. Um, it almost seems like it's too much, right? Like they're trying to fabricate something. Maybe a trade up past them. You know, maybe the Chargers take them, something like that. But four quarterbacks going, Bowers, in my opinion, would be would be great. Not not saying that I want to limit the Jets' options, but the Bowers stuff is exhausting. It's exhausting. And I've said it multiple times in the stream. I've, I've clarified myself multiple times in terms of I think he could be a good player. So I don't want people to start going crazy if we do draft him because I will root for him. I will watch it freshman and sophomore year, and then we'll see where we go from there. Um, but brutal, dude. People, the Bowers people are brutal, like brutal, brutal. So I almost want to completely avoid it. Just taking my six to seven. I just, I don't want to hear it anymore. And him getting picked early in the draft would be, oh, you know, 30, 40, 50 less minutes. I have to hear about Bowers. So John says, Hey, Joe, I'd love you and Connor Rogers to do a pod where you break down some. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I left TOJ. The TOJ did not appreciate it very much. So that's where I'll leave that. <laughs> I don't think I don't think we're doing any of those anytime soon. Um looking at Odunze versus Bowers at 10, which position would provide the Jets the most value short and long term? I don't I, it, that's that, Dan, I guess really it's more pref, preference for player. You know, I, I think they could play both the same amount of snaps realistically. You know, Conklin's it's a free agent after this year. Mike Williams is a free agent after this year. So it's not like you have guys who um, you, it's not like it's not like you have a plethora of, you know, wide receivers on the contract, and you don't have really any tight ends. You know, minus Jeremy Rucker, who's going to be in his what fourth year of his contract next year. So long term, it doesn't really matter who you grab. And then in both positions, you kind of have like quasi. Though you have starters, right? You have Garrett Wilson, you have Mike Williams, you have, um, and obviously you have Conklin. So it's either way. It's it's really either way. It's more it's more preference on player. And and the thing with Bowers, which we've talked about plenty of times again, it's getting exhausting. He's not a guy who's just going to be 12 personnel. Oh, okay, well if they're if they're if they're drafting if they're drafting Bowers and it has to be, you know, 12 personnel. How much are they going to play 12 personnel? Oh, they're only going to play it 20% of the time. Okay, so the other 80% of the reps, you know, Conklin's going to be up the field. What is this? It's, it's not what's going to happen. Um, he's basically going to be a receiver. He's going to be replacing Lazard in the slot. If you have 11 personnel, you know, it's, it's going to be Bowers. Bowers is one of those three receivers in those instances. If you want to call 12, call 12. If you want to call 11, call 11. I don't give a shit, but um, it's not going to affect Conklin so, so much. Now, in some base sets, it, it, it will. So maybe Conklin's reps drop. I don't I don't know what he played last year. Uh, let's say 85% of the snaps, maybe they'll drop to 75, 70. You know, maybe they'll drop 10, 5, 10, 15%, but Conklin's not going to be largely affected by, by Bowers slightly, but it's going to be more Lazard um, receiver threes than, than anything. But um, so I don't, I don't really think there's any like benefit or, or, or difference in receiver and tight end going, going forward. You know, uh, Latham and, uh, and OBJ or Odunze and Bakhtiari. Uh, give me Odunze and Bakhtiari for sure out of, out of those. Um, just because like Bakhtiari, you know, there's a lot of questions about him and his medicals and all that type of stuff. But with that being said, if you can get him healthy for just three, four, five games that he has to play, like he's still a stud. OBJ is a is a okay at best receiver three. Like it's not really very um, exciting, you know. OBJ, I guess at receiver three, I wouldn't I wouldn't lose it. But yeah, give me Odunze and Bakhtiari. Give me Odunze, Bakhtiari, Donovan Smith, and Warren. You know, give give me three backups. Like, and what? Why can't we sign Bakhtiari and Donovan Smith? You know, now that's assuming that Bakhtiari wants to be a backup, and that's assuming Donovan Smith wants to be the backup to the backup. But in fa- in fantasy world over here, you can say that why can't we sign both? But, but it's not like you could you you go to the draft, you sign Bakhtiari, and you're done. Like, who's why does Max Mitchell deserve a spot on the roster? Who's to say that there's not some tackle out there who's going to outperform him? Maybe they draft the guy in the third round, in the fourth round, you know, uh, and they sign Bakhtiari. So I'm thinking Odunze and the field um, versus Latham and and the field. 
Dane says, uh, happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. Again, busy weekend. Uh, Jake, Jake Asman tomorrow. Um, Connor, uh, Connor on Sunday. Dom on Sunday. Let's talk Jets on Monday. Uh, stream Thursday after like the first half of the draft. I will come on here. It'll be interesting like it was last time. Uh, maybe the callers that night too. Screw it. Friday callers uh, watching the draft together. I know there's plenty of other channels and stuff like that, but even if I have five people in here, I don't care. Um, Sneakers to Booth says, I, I have absolutely no faith in Hackett to uh, appropriately use Bowers. Took forever last year from the uh, air as a big motion guy. If we're trading it, Brock, you trust it. So I don't, I don't think – now, yes, we do not have faith in Hackett to properly use Bowers. Is, is he – are they still going to be able to use him on some end around some jet sweeps and stuff like that? Yeah, sure they will because, like, they used Conklin on some tight end screens and things like that. So I'm sure they'll, they'll just replace Conklin for Bowers in that role. Um, but do I do I expect him to make an entire offense around him? You know, no. Did, and and should he even have a whole offense built around him? No, he's he's a rookie. With that being said, like you have faith in him to 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 properly um, deploy any type of wrinkle and and call it the right time and stuff. Like no, not necessarily. Um, I I do think Bowers fits in terms of Rodgers as a guy who's either vertical or he's going to be like in in the flats and short. Um, and Bowers could be used to chip guys. And again, this is we're talking about pick ten here, so this is this is part of the problem. It's like he he could be used to chip guys, you know, leak out to the flats, slide routes, you know, bench routes, whatever it may be, just short option routes. Like there's there's plenty of ways you can use him quick, and then you get the ball in his hands, and you know he's off. So I think his I think his um, he would be targeted in this offense. I, I know the Jets were in the top half of the league last year in terms of like tight end receiving yards. In the entire team, so it's not like he wouldn't be utilized. Now, would he again? Like, would it be like a Debo Samuel role? No, but at the same time, the Jets do hit the flats enough quickly with like with tight ends and little checkdowns that I do think Bowers would be able to show some of his yak ability in this offense. So they would use him. They would use him. Drop D says Joe finally caught you live. Perfect timing too with the draft around the corner. Yeah, man, it's uh, it, I'm, I'm getting really like just done with the waiting. It's uh, I know you guys are too. It's 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 a brutal wait at, at this point because you know the Jets aren't really signing anybody. Nothing's going on. Um, the arguments over players is wild. Uh, it really is. So Malik Davis is a uh, 1,000 wide receiver in the NFL separation for days. Malik Davis is a 1K wide receiver in the NFL separation for days. What the hell is even that? I got I got to throw out some sound bites. I don't know. I don't know. Is he is he a one K receiver in the NFL every day? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, I, I would say now this year with the Jets specifically, probably not. Like if I had to bet over under, you know, and it's a thousand yards, I would say no, just because you have Brees, you have you have, Brees, you have Conk, you have you know Garrett, and you have Mike Williams. So I would say you're going with the Jets, probably not. But on a team that has less weapons, for sure, for sure. Uh, Freedom House says, hey man, I really think we need to double dip at wide receiver. Williams is still hurt. Uh, so starters are Garrett Wilson, Lazard Gibson. Yeah, yeah, Freedom. We brought this up last week. Uh, I, I think we brought this up last week, or one of the shows I was on. There's, there's a world where you draft a receiver at at ten. Let's say it's a Doomsday at ten. Why can't you get a guy in the third or fourth round? Who cares? Like, is it is is there some role we can't grab two receivers? You know, are you confident with Lazard as receiver four, as receiver three when Mike Williams is hurt? I'm not. So like, yeah, why not? You know, I'm. Again, and I know Jets fans get a little bit obsessed with their players. Um, is Gibson anything to write home about? Would we lose our mind if Gibson was cut this year? You know, Brownlee? No? Irv Charles? You know, special teams reasons? I don't know. But it's, uh, yeah, I, I think adding two is, 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 is plenty of realistic. Why not? Why not? If you had to guess who the pick will be, not who you want. I, I would say I would say Bowers is what I'm thinking right now, just because of mayhem reasons. Um, I think it's gonna be Bowers or Odunze in a slight trade up. I could I could see Odunze maybe falling to, to ten, but it, I would get really nervous. Um, I'll get really nervous. What it goes, it goes Falcons eight, Bears nine, right? Bears have Keenan Allen and they have DJ Moore. The problem is uh, Keenan Allen is is obviously older, so like you could easily you could easily draft Odunze. So it's gonna cost you a fourth round pick to secure a guy you want. Uh, I'm more than willing to do it, but if we're talking about trade ups, we're talking about a fourth round pick for for Odunze. I'm personally willing to give up a second and a fourth to go all the way up to, to six to give up, uh, or or to give up a, a second and a fourth for neighbors. Um, I like Odunze as a prospect. I like neighbors a lot more. So it is what it is. In my opinion, neighbors is a thicker 15 uh, 15 pounds faster and even more explosive. Gary Wilson, love neighbors, but personally, I believe I, I prefer Odunze. I believe he's a better complement. Yeah, I don't know. I I I know Sable thinks this. Um, compliment in terms of like how though. I, I 
you know, I think Neighbors can do everything. I, I think Neighbors is even a better compliment because he's more well-rounded than Odunze. Odunze has to work against getting off of press. So if you're going to play him on the line of scrimmage, you know, he, he could struggle at the NFL level unless he's just being equally deep. Um, but Neighbors can fit X, he could fit Z, he could fit slot, you know, he could fit really anything. So I think he's a perfect complement to this to this offense. But I think Neighbors has like better acceleration. I think Neighbors is faster than Garrett Wilson. But in terms of like explosiveness out of breaks and stuff or into breaks, I would say Garrett Wilson is more explosive in and out of breaks, but Neighbors is faster and, and even even like more acceleration. But explosive doesn't mean acceleration to me necessarily. So um Garrett Wilson's different in terms of how he plays. He's different in terms of how he plays. Let's see. Um, let's see. Did I? I don't even know how that. How that? <laughs> I freaking put a poll in the in the chat, and now my thing's not loading on my screen. So let's see if I can do this again. Did I put it in the chat? And what are the results? I don't know. I suck. I suck at YouTube. I just suck. It is what it is. I don't. I don't know the results. Did I even ask it? Is there even a poll in the chat? Can somebody tell me is there a poll in the chat? I meant to put it in there, and it it might not have loaded because of all of the uh, all the technical problems. Let's say, um, call. I'm gonna do it again. I I just I'm I'm not good technically, like at all, at all, at all. There we go. I think I started a new one. Uh, Rob D says, I'm a, I, am I the only one that thinks Odunze plays a little slow? Not that he's stuck in mud or anything, but nowhere near as somewhat I'd call fast. It all depends on on what what is their body size. You know, for a guy who's 6'3", 215, is he pretty fast? I would say yes. Like, I don't I don't think he's neighbors. I don't think he's Garrett Wilson, level explosive. I don't think he's, you know, Henry Ruggs. I don't think he's the the receiver who, who broke the 40-yard dash this, this year or anything like that. But do I think a guy running, you know, 4'4", four, 5'4", four, for – uh, you know, six three, six four, two fifteen is is good speed. Yes, is it elite speed? No, but why? We could take solid speed. Like he's he's solidly fast for his size. I think that's I think that's fair. Um, do you believe we should stay away from Brock because the rest is too high? Do you believe we should stay away from Brock because the rest is too high? What the hell is even that? YouTube sucks. Not you. YouTube today. Is it, is it YouTube? Is that just me? Am I the only? Am I not the only one freezing and stuff? Okay. Okay. So it's not, it's, it's YouTube today. This was from before when I froze up. Okay. I'm sorry. I apologize. You're good now. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Outlaw says, I do believe, uh, Brees Hall will be the person that will be gone sadly because of his position. I would say, and even out of like the, the, the so like that's the big four. I can even imagine another guy go- going like, if you had to pick, okay, you know, sauce Garrett JJ, like, I feel like one of those guys is going to be gone. You know your 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 head tells you okay well we'll obviously retain Sauce and and uh, Sauce and Garrett Wilson because they're the two best players. Um, but I could see Garrett Wilson, man. Like, I love Garrett Wilson, but he is super super fiery and he really really wants to win. Uh, I I could see a world where if this doesn't go great in the next two years, that he is trying to go to to, to the Texans or or something. Um, he's one of those guys who makes me a little bit nervous about that. I'm hoping they keep him. I love the way he plays. I love the fireness. I just bought his jersey, so him uh him not making it past another two years would be would be really disheartening. Um, but I'm hoping at the same point, like the Jets could could turn it around and, and make him faithful in this organization because his interviews at the end of the year, I forget exactly what he said, but they were not glowing of the Jets. He's like, I, you know, I hate losing, like I want to win. And then I guess like a day or two later that they had like their end of the year meetings, like, okay, we talked about it, like I feel better. But still, like if you you know, he's frustrated after year two, and even year one, he was frustrated. If he's frustrated after year one, year two, what happens year three, three and four if it doesn't, you know, work out like he wants it to? Mm, I'm nervous. You know, uh, Sauce Gardner is definitely going to be here for sure. That's the sure thing. It's very safe. Yeah, I, I think Sauce is very safe. I, I do. I cannot imagine the Jets not doing everything in their power to to sign a guy who's not only the best corner in the NFL, but who is, in terms of like his off the field stuff, like he's he's great. Um, you know, doesn't smoke, doesn't drink. I think he represents the Jets pretty well. Now, do I think he should be off of social media a little bit more than than he is yeah like in my opinion but it's it's the new age it's the it's the new day and age um but you see some like rumors floating around about him like you try to hook up with this girl or whatever or like just stupid shit because of the people he hangs out with like all these you know hollywood people but rob d says my personal big board uh one harrison two neighbors and those are the only two you trade up for okay uh 
Three alts, four Latham, five Odunze, six Fashanu, seven Bowers. Every everyone else trade down, including Fatano and Fuaga. Um, okay, so you have Fatano and Fuaga at like at like eight and nine. I, w- I would guess here. I am willing though, Rob, to trade like so. Like let's say it's a situation where, I, like again, you know, you have let's say Harrison Neighbors are off the board, and the and the and the Bears are or the, uh, the the Falcons are saying, hey, you know, the Bears are probably gonna pick Odunze. Give us your fourth. Is it not worth it to you to trade up a fourth round pick for Odunze at pick eight? Uh, you know, I'm, I I think that. I think he's probably not realistically worth it, but in this draft where I don't want to be stuck with Brock Bowers, I kind of, I kind of just want to do it at that point. I just really don't want to hear about it. Now, if they stick and pick and Odunze is gone, you know, give me Latham over Bowers. Um, but there's not many offensive linemen I'm taking over Bowers just because of the upside. You know, he has the ability to be a star. There's a lot of things I, I need to see with with him specifically coming to the NFL level. But again, I'm not, in no world am I saying he can't be a good player. Um, and I'd rather take a shot on that with a guy who's going to play 65, 70% of the reps this year, next year, than a guy who's going to play, you know, 30, 40, whatever it may be. Now, there is another side of the argument where you're going to say, okay, well, if they trade down, if they draft a a, a Fatanu, a, a Fuanga, um, you know, that they can play guard and they could beat out John Simpson, which is possible. But now you're taking your rookie and you're trying to play him like, like Fuanga is going to what cross train at right tackle, left guard. And then uh, Fatanu is going to do the same thing. Like he's going to be left tackle, left guard in his first year. You know, um, I think it's a possibility to beat out jo- uh, John Simpson. I'm not going to guarantee it, though. I think John Simpson's like an average-ish level guard. Um, and there's not many rookies who come in are and are average-ish, especially guys who are cross training at multiple positions. So I understand that. Like I understand that thinking. Like okay, we'll just draft the guy and he can play guard and beat out Simpson. Fine. And then get and, and then Simpson's a great backup at left guard, right right guard. I understand that. But I still think bang for your buck, it's you're better off getting a a a skill position guy again for the ceiling of what this year can be. I understand the floor people, I do. Um, again, I just don't know if you if you beat the Chiefs with Alan Lazard as your three. I'm not saying that after the draft they can't do anything, they can't side Boyd anything like that. But I think having getting ballsy, going up and getting a MH a MHJ or a Odunze or um or neighbors would like really put you over the next level. Um, so. He's not going to stand for losing. The graveyard of jerseys in my closet makes me uh, contemplate my priorities. Uh, meanwhile, New Jersey's released Monday and immediately bought two more. Why not three though? Unless, unless you already brought. I'm, I'm assuming sneakers to boots. You already had the white one, so you bought the green and the black. Um, I had the. I ordered the white one last year in like, I don't even know what it was, June, and then it was getting here in like late October. Rogers tore his shit. Like canceled the order, and then I just re, I just reordered it. You know, so. Uh, DMR says, I really want us to go O line every single year. It's it's always our worst position. Let's finally take care of it for the love of God. I understand that too. Um, and I and I understand that people saying that, you know, look at the problems it's been in the last few years, but Joe Douglas is also a pro- part of the problem in the few that last year or in the last few years, right? Like now, obviously we had like 13 different lineups or 13 different players or whatever the hell happened last year, but still he addressed it also like balls at the same time. So we could say, like, yeah, offensive line, if if we only have like Again, we have to assume there's free agency as well, right? Like it's not it's not like we go into this draft and then we're done. So we could always address stuff in, via free agency. So if we do get an Odunze, why can't we sign again? Bakhtiari, Don Smith, whoever else. Um, now JD is going to be like JD of last offseason. It's just say, okay, screw it. We're going to rely on the injured guys, uh, the injured guys, a la Becton and Brown. Then we're then then we're then we're fucked. Like sorry, you know you don't want you don't want Warren, you don't want Mitchell as your backups. They should be your four and your five or just your five. You know. Max Mitchell may not even make the roster this year, um, but you can get guys in free agency. You know, you can you can get Bakhtiari or Diamond Smith or, or wh- whoever it may be. But I get it. Again, I do. I'm not taking a strong stance on on either side. Um, super chat from AP says, "What round does our uh, what does our starting O line look like if we draft an O line in, in the first round?" Yeah, it's that's what I kind of just mentioned. It's like depending on who you take. If it's Latham, I think Latham stays at tackle. You know. Um, I think the only two guys who you can like move inside or try to move inside is is Fuaga and Fatanu, but then you're also taking something away from them. Like you, you know, they're they're trying to their their heads spinning and they're swimming at the NFL level in year one, and you're going to cross train them in multiple positions. You know, not necessarily the best like developmental um thing, but assuming that they're not going to play a lot of the reps, I I get it. Um, but I would say Fatanu, maybe he plays over Simpson at left guard. Maybe Fuaga plays over Simpson at left guard. But initially, I'm going to say that they're on the bench, you know. 
you know, so uh, now what does it look like? It's it's Tyron Smith, it's Simpson, it's 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 Tippman, it's ABT, it's Morgan Moses, and it's the draft pick on the bench. You know, I don't think any of them are going to start over Morgan Moses. I think Morgan Moses is a pretty solid player at right tackle. I don't see that happening um, unless it's a thing where, you know, he gets hurt and then like Latham takes a job for a couple of weeks and he dominates or even he's close to Morgan Moses level. Then, OK, you play him over it. But um, I think most likely at first the, 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 the pick is on the bench. And that's kind of my problem with it. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, thank you for the super chat as well. Mac and Zegan Holy Cross says, OK, scenario, you can't trade down. Who are you picking out of the following? Um, Olu Fashano, Brock Bowers, uh, Fatanu, Roma Dunze. So I would go, man, um, I would go Odunze first there. I'd probably go Bowers to Fashanu three, Fatanu four. Um, but that's a really close argument between Bowers and Fashanu at uh at two there. It's just again, bang for the buck type of deal. Bang for the buck type of deal. Okay, let's keep going through the chat. Uh I always get lost. I always get lost. I am back. Yes. Okay. I'm back to there. Mm -mm -mm. Get one of the three wide receivers. We should be able to get up to eight. Yes. Uh, the way JD gushed about Bowers uh, makes me think Bowers is a smokescreen. JD never gives us anything. Yeah. I, I would like to be a smokescreen. Again, I just don't want to deal with it. Garrett Gumby. Um, Joe, who's the pick that would make you want to chug a beer? And and what pick would you? I think, I think, uh, Either way, you want to chuck a beer, right? Good, good or bad. But which one would make me want to throw a phone or punch a pillow? Offense only. Uh, offense only. Who would make me want to? Like, so again, I would be okay with Bowers. I'm just not ready to get tagged a bunch of times saying I hate Bowers, which again is just it's just inherently false. But it's just a thing that people have heard. So now I'm the I'm the Bowers hater, which again is just not true. So I would say Bowers would be like the most frustrating pick. It's like God damn like now we got months and months and even years of people going back to oh bowers uh either good or bad and like i want to personally root for him to be good in the nfl level but then like the part of me who like wants to see the the, the bauer boys like assholes just like just like peel off and and die it, it makes me like want bowers to suck and i don't ever want to root for jets players to suck and i never will but still dude like i i just don't want to deal with it so in terms of the player like i'm not going to lose my shit but just all the social media stuff that comes with Bowers, that's the one that's making me want to punch something, throw something. Um, chug one, like good wise, I would say Odunze getting a 10 would be a good one, or them trading up for, for neighbors or Harrison Jr. That's the only way I want. I'm like, wow, awesome. Now, Latham, I would be like, okay, solid pick, but I'm not like chugging a beer happy, um, happy with, with that happening. So, uh, check your mic input. Uh, audio is fine, but I've heard it be slightly better. Maybe it's just YouTube being shitty. Yeah, it's uh. I think I think all my mics are good. Let's see. Audio. Yeah, main stereo. Yeah, I should be I should be good on my side. Everything looks good. So it's maybe it's your shitty speakers, Ben. I don't know. Get better speakers, dude. Bauer's not going top 15. Mm. Uh no ten ends are worth round one. Ever? Ever? I don't know. Um hot take, I could see the Chargers wanting him. I could see I could see it as well. You know, who is our tight end right now? Like they had they had was it Gerald Everett last year who was like in and out of the lineup and injuries and stuff like that? I believe, you know, so Howard's is not football rated. It was nice of your dad to come to my uncle's wake on Wednesday. Uh, okay. <laughs> who I, I'm sorry. I don't know if I know you, uh, Howard per Aranto. Who's your dad? I'm sorry. I don't, you know, I don't, it's not like I speak to my dad every day. So I don't know. I don't know what wake he went to on Wednesday, but I'm, I apologize for your loss. Nice, my dad had come there. <clears throat> um, one crazy scenario that I think is semi realistic is uh, and it is a trade down that nets us a second round pick, and JD falls in love with Murphy. Don't kill me. I just think it's a wild card possibility. Why would I kill you, John? Like uh, Rob, it's if, if I'm telling if if anybody is out there in YouTube community telling you you're crazy for thinking Murphy, I think they're kind of stupid to be honest. Like I don't know who said that, but I'm sorry. If they took Will McDonald last year, who's much less of a need than D tackle is this year. I can see them taking Murphy. Now, do I want that to happen? Absolutely not. But the situation, where, let's say they trade down to 20 and it's like between him and like, I don't, I don't know who are the second tier of talent. I'm, th I'm talking like Fuaga has gone. Uh, Fatanu is gone. Maybe even Mims is gone. And it's like, what, what are the next guys like Guyton and, and whoever else, you know, and then it's Murphy sitting there. I could, I could see them taking Murphy hundred percent. I'm not going to kill you. That's, that's, that's very realistic considering what just happened like a calendar year ago. So 
if they both get uh lauren says if they both get uh, 1k yards the contracts that odunze would command compared to bowers is is way more you're talking about like odunze's contracts so you're talking about like odunze being better bang for your buck in terms of the rookie contract is that what you're talking about lawrence because if you're if you're if that is what you're saying you are right uh in terms of the tight ends like i think the tight end like you're automatically in the top 10 or something like that for tight ends in terms of your yearly salary so you're you're automatically getting paid to be a good tight end or in the range that good tight ends are getting paid is what I should say. Right. And let me, let me re let me redo those words. Um, last year, Garrett Wilson wanted JSN this year. He seems to want Odunze get it done. JD. Yeah. I'm, I'm cool with Odunze. Like I said, I'm, I'm more willing to go up for neighbors than Odunze, but uh, it's been a while. Uh, it's been a while a month. Congratulations to you and your extended family. Now. Um, I haven't seen you since then, Chris, really. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. He's doing well. He's, uh, he's beefy. He's, he's not like fat. Like he's not a lot of rolls, but like, he's very thick. Like dude's got like thick, forearms it's uh i'm excited to see how how much he how much he he, uh, he grows but doing this a high character guy too yeah and that's um and when ben brought uh uh brought up obj before it's kind of the, one of the reasons i don't i don't really want obj i don't want that type of player in in the locker room i don't really like how he is and how he's about himself and you already have garrett wilson who i'm not saying is a diva um he's definitely not like he's a feisty guy but he wants the ball so they're gonna have a guy in garrett who wants the ball obj's bitching for the ball now i don't know if that's still the obj thing of recent years because obviously you know he had, he's had the lower expectations for what he actually is as a player um but i don't want obj in this locker room man i don't you know the guy i want to get out of the locker room i don't really want to hear about anymore I, michael clemens like I, i'm just done with it you know i'm done with the, the tough guy thing it, okay you're tough like you're trying to be tough to guys who are 320 pounds nobody's scared of you at the nfl level you know I, I I'm just done with the Michael Carter thing walking with a bat and shit. You know, people are, you know, what do you say? I'm going to, I'm going to show people I'm an effing monster in the preseason. He had like one tackle the entire preseason, whatever it was. He's just not very good. Um, so I don't know, like as your fifth, the end fine as a run stuffer. Okay, fine. But I'm kind of done with the shtick. Kind of done with the shtick. I'm like doing cardio. Good job. Good job. Eagle's been killing it with the cardio, losing some, some, some weight over there. Good luck with the Kenoble bit. Uh, man, it's tiring. Um, yeah, I, it uh this leaked into my chat i believe last week and then i've seen a ton of it on twitter so I, I know what it's about um you know i don't we'll see we'll see how much it's brought up i don't know how long i'm going on i don't want to be a 20 minute thing an hour thing an hour and a half thing i don't i don't know but 10 a.m i'll be on jake's show so catch me there um would you rather have the titan the top, oh, sorry the titans thomas jr after a trade down plus two a uh, second round pick or dunes latham at 10 um give me give me odunes or latham at 10 i like brian thomas jr but it's he's Again, I liked him in watching back, but he seems to be like pretty raw um, overall. Uh, I paid attention to him a little bit, like watching back a little bit of like neighbor stuff before I did that review. Um, and I would be happy with him like late teens, you know, mid, maybe even the mid teens, late teens, early 20s. But uh, I, I know the picks that sound appealing and all that stuff, second round pick, third round picks, fourth round picks, but. The Jets are the point now where like they don't have so many holes, just fill it with as much quality players as you can. And like they only need a starting level receiver. You know, you can find backup offensive linemen. And I get, again, you want the guy for the long term. But for this very year, which may be the only year that matters, receiver makes more of an impact than a backup offensive lineman. And the backup offensive lineman, I get it. They can start over Simpson. Um, but then you have a, a player who's making six, seven, eight million dollars on the bench. And I think he's actually okay. You know, they don't have an okay number three right now. They have nothing close to an okay number three. Now, again, the, can they sign Boyd? Maybe, you know, I don't know. For agent offensive tackles, yeah, uh, Cam Fleming is a guy I brought up last week as well, RJ, so that's a good poll. Um, he's another guy who people are apparently interested in. Luppy, uh, if we don't come out of this draft with a quality tackle and a decent RC receiver, I will be pissed. Yeah, um, now, I kind of I, I, it depends, right? Like, if they, it, let's say they don't sign a tackle or they don't they don't draft a tackle the entire draft, Luppy, and then a week later they sign Bakhtiari, like, are you still pissed? You know, I don't, I don't know. If they don't come away with with a big time receiver or tackle, I'll be pissed. If they don't get one of those in a big way, I'll be mad. Both, I don't know, because what happens if you get it, you get Odunze and then I don't know, some some guy you everybody loves in here falls to 72 and you grab him at receiver. And in the fourth round, it's like, oh shit, good running back. Oh shit, another good safety. Yeah, you have running back, safety, two receivers. And you're like, oh no, we don't have an offensive lineman. You're all well, be pissed until they come out and sign Bakhtiari and Fleming. And we're like, okay. Okay, we'll we'll take it. And again, what are the chances that any one of these tackles, Fatanu, Fuaga, whatever, are gonna be better than Bakhtiari? You know. So why so much Bowers? <laughs> I don't know. Bowers is a possibility. Yeah. Uh free agent offense tackles. Yeah, Bakhtiari, Donovan Smith, Fleming, free agent receivers, uh Boyd, OBJ, 
shark. So yeah, no, no need for a civil war after I'm okay. I'm okay with like, if, if they were to go receiver at 72 and then they sign on a Boyd. Okay. I think it's a perfectly acceptable group. I'm like the, but the ceiling wise, if, if Harrison jr really is going to be that good or our neighbors are really going to be that good, you know, um, I think that's where it makes the biggest impact. So let's see. OBJ as a third wouldn't be bad, especially for a slot guy. Yeah. I just don't like the personality, like bigger personality than he is a player right now. You know, um, not having the second round pick sucks though. We also couldn't, could have not. Yeah. If we didn't have a first this year, that would have sucked. But at the same, at the same point, sinkers of boots, we, we are, we're coming off, uh, we're coming into an off season where we would have been in the playoffs, right? Like you win the Pats game, you win the Raiders game, you win the Falcons game. Right. At the minimum, I'm sure there are other games in there that I could think of that we could have won, you know, maybe the Chiefs game, even though even though Zach was pretty good in that one. So it's not going to say that one. But at the Chargers game, they they blew us out. But it ugly quarterback play. You know, um, just when says, Joe, what do you think about Xavier Worthy? Uh, elite speed. He could be. This is the guy from Texas that like some people are questioning, like work ethic and, and like, how mature he is and stuff like that. So I'm not so sure in, in terms of that stuff, because we are missing like so much behind the scenes that we don't really re- realize we are now just because he's fast. Is he meet Tyreek Hill? No. Um, is he going to be the next Tyreek Hill? Probably not. No, I, I would bet quite a bit of money that he's not going to be one of the most productive receivers in the last 10 years. Like realistically, no. Um, he's probably more likely to be, and I'm not just trying to show on the prospect, but taught in terms of law of averages, he's more likely to be John Ross or Henry Ruggs, not minus that stuff. Let's just say John Ross than he is to being Tyree Kill based on how the draft works. So I would take the field on that one for sure. Um, no pull. Yeah, I'm sorry. No pull. Audio is good now. Okay, so it's just it's just this this freaking YouTube is just having a shitty day, huh? Uh, Bakhtari is a great is great for just a few games to back up Smith. Yeah, it's 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 honestly a, that's probably one of your better backup plans you can have. The problem is if your backup plan also gets injured because he's only played in what like he only played in like six games last year. So if he gets injured, let's say you know Tyron Smith, knock on wood, misses three weeks of the season, um, and and Bakhtiari comes in in the first game, he comes out, he pops his shit too. It's like damn. So you might want to have two guys if you get Bakhtiari, but. I'm okay with that. You know, I'm, I'm okay with signing two tackles. There's, there's no, it's not written in the rule book that you can't, you know, 67. Yes. 33. No. Okay. Is Jamal, is Jamal Adams a good comp to Harrison? What the hell is even that? Oh, Devonte Adams. Uh, no, I don't know. And, and the thing with Harrison too, is I haven't like, again, we're just, just, just realistically, I haven't done a ton of work into Harrison just because I figured that there's no world the Jets will get him. So I have a lot to watch if he, if he is, um, if he is drafted by the Jets. So I don't want to say comparisons. I don't, uh, no protection, no production. Yeah, fine. Completely with you. Sluggo, but they can supplement free agency, right? Like the draft isn't, isn't the end of it. It's not the end of it. Uh, we won't have a QB to, to pay, so they should be able to keep most of them. Yeah, but they're also pushing a lot of like dead money into these years. You look at a lot of the contracts, they have all the void years and all this stuff. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, void years, dead dead money, all that stuff. Um, you know, I think they'll be able to keep some of them. Do you think you're going to be able to keep all of them? Like, it, it, are you going to be able to keep JJ, who's going to be, you know, a higher level defensive end contract? Brees Hall, who's going to be one of the top five to 10 running back for the next couple of years that he's playing in the NFL. Again, knock on wood, hopefully he's healthy. Garrett, Sauce, MC2, Reed, Quincy, after his contract's up in two years, when those guys are up too, like how many of these guys can you really keep? I, you, you, can't keep you can't keep all of them. You can't keep Quincy, Mosley, all these. There's just no way. There's just no way. Uh, Rob says, personally, I'd take Latham at 10 over trading a fourth for Odunze. That's fine. And I like Latham more than Odunze individually as a player. Um, but it's just about making that like that splash again, that that final move to push you over the edge. And I think you may need to do that to, again, beat Andy Reid, Travis Kelsey, the refs, Taylor Swift, Patrick Mahomes. You know, uh, good pro comparison. Uh, ben, I, I rarely if ever do that. I do like Latham, um, but still leaning getting one of the top three receivers. The NFL is an arms race, and giving Rodgers his most talented receiver group ever could be a good uh, a good story or a bit scary, whatever you're saying. Yeah, I'm with you, man. Like he's never really had a a super talented group outside of Devontae. Well, he was there with like the end of Greg Jennings, right? Um, Greg Jennings, Devontae, but like Devontae was early on. So I would say in terms of the the overall group, this would definitely be the best group he's ever had if we are to grab um Odunze and it might even be the best group we've had he's had 
even if we don't, well, I don't, I don't know in terms of like depths and, and, and what else he's had with, uh, with Devante. But if you grab one of these rookies, it's definitely the best. And now on top of that, you're playing him with the best running back he's ever played with, you know, sorry, Aaron Jones, but Brees Hall is a, is a better player. Um, his tight ends haven't been anything to write home about, you know, Tunyon and whoever else, you know, I'm not sure who he's played with earlier, earlier on, but Conklin's at least up there. So you're talking about, you know, best, re- best receiver group, best, t- but one of the better tight end groups he's ever had. One of the better running back groups he's ever had healthy. One of the better, it's not, if not the best offensive line he's ever had. Oh, and on top of all this shit, we have a top three defense, you know? So like, again, the floor versus ceiling comparison, you know, one raises the floor, one raises the ceiling. So it kind of depends. Oh, do you think we should stay away from Brock because the risk is too high? Um, no, I don't think you should stay away because the risk is too high. I think he's a risky player, but I just wish there was a little bit more talent at receiver. Like I wish there was like a fourth guy who we we're all really happy about and I wouldn't care so much, you know? Uh, Joe, does your room, does your room, there's a, does your room, does your room there double as a in- an interrogation room with the with the green light? Mm, it's not the most threatening thing in the world, so so no, um, no, it does not sluggo. But I have a question. Uh, super chat from Joe. Joe, if Niners were to offer Ayuk in thirty one for ten, or for thir- Ayuk in thirty one for ten, nine uh, Niners would would rookie wide receiver. Sorry, I'm shaking. I my knees always shake, so the camera's shaking. I gotta stop doing that. Um, would rookie wide receiver and we take a known commodity. My problem with this is we're talking about all these guys we want to tr- that we want to re-sign in the future. How are we gonna do that with with Brandon Ayuk on the team now? Um, because he's gonna cost you a massive, you know, uh contract as well. Because once you trade for him, like he has you by the balls. And let's are gonna talk to him and say, hey, okay, you know, I'll push off the deal two years, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and that's when I'm gonna take a brunt of the money. Okay. Um, but assuming that you're trading for for him, he's gonna cost you twenty-five million dollars a year or something like that. And the Jets are at about negative two right now. So how in the world can they make that work? Um to me, like, I, I think I, I, you almost have to say yes, right? Because like he's worth a first and maybe more in him in 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 in, in itself. So now you're just taking a first and trading down 21 spots. Like I think it's very tempting, but at that point, I'd rather just take next year's first, trade that, and then get up to 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 you know four and get a guy in Marvin Harrison Jr. who I think is probably going to be a better player than Ayuk in the future, and who's not going to cost you as much money. It's just I don't know how you make it work with the with the money with with Brandon Ayuk. Again, you're at negative two million dollars right now, or somewhere near that. Uh, how do you make his contract work? And sign the rookies. And sign you know, whatever you're going to do a tackle because if you trade 10, well, I guess, I guess you can technically get 31 and draft a tackle there, Guyton, whoever's there, but I don't think the Jets can make it work in terms of the, in terms of the contract. So I don't think it's overly realistic that it can happen. So, um, okay. Uh, back, 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 back. Um, uncle Rico says first time in the Joe Douglas era that Rex Hogan uh, will not be involved in the draft process as, as well as their former director of uh, personnel. This is truly uh, Joe's draft, and I wonder, like, what were their who 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 was the pro personnel scout? That's that's what I really want to know in terms of the front office because that guy should have been fired. Uh, Rex Hogan went, you know, different his, his other ways and stuff, and you know, I don't know the actual effect that each one of these individual guys has. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go crazy over it. Um, Lawrence says our terrible offensive line last year, average time to throw 2.5. A, a, uh, Aaron Rodgers' career time is. 2.43 and the line I'd say got better as soon as ABT comes back plus add tackles and Simpson over like and yeah it's it's a it's a thing where people just look at the offensive line and say like okay you know he has to be able to stand up to to throw the ball but at the same point like we have to realize that some of these good receivers can also hide the offensive line it's not like the offensive like I get that statement if you if your offensive line was full of Connor McDermott's but if if you have like one slightly slightly weak link obviously you can you can overcome it with scheming now obviously assuming we have Hackett so maybe not but um, you could you could overcome it a little bit, and considering that you'd have, let's just say, in, in this scenario, neighbors Wilson and Mike Williams, you're not going to really need to hold on to the ball for very long. You know, one of those guys is going to be open in two seconds. So, um, it, it it works both ways. You know, it works both ways. Uh, another super chat, I believe this is a new one. Uh, the big fellow says, if we draft their Dunze and Garrett is gone in two years, he becomes expendable. Uh, we okay with that? Have to sign Sauce Breeze, uh, JJ Garrett Wilson. Um, yeah, I don't I don't think I don't think. I don't think Odunze getting drafted means that Garrett. I, I like 
he becomes expendable, but that's only if Odunze is an absolute savage. You know, Garrett Wilson, considering what he's done with Zach Wilson in the last couple of years, Zach Wilson and whoever else we've had a quarterback, you know, he's a top 10 to 15 guy in the NFL, top, you know, 20, however you want to quantify, uh, quali- or, yeah, quantify it. There's a lot of good receivers out there, but he's an upper echelon receiver in the NFL level. So the only reason he becomes expendable is if Odunze is a stud. And at that point, like, yeah, okay expendable but at, at, at the same point like you want two really good receivers in today's nfl so it's not a thing where like okay well if a dunze comes in and he's good you have to get rid of garrett wilson you know and if he comes in and sucks then you definitely have to keep garrett wilson but in a perfect world he comes in he dominates and you return but you retain both of them you know so i think he only becomes expendable if if he's actually good which then we win anyway um because then it gives us some more you know uh negotiating tactics you know flexibility whatever whatever it may be but i do uh, appreciate the super chat um, the big fella, let me see, uh, go back a little bit up in the chat and I'll, I'm trying to catch up here and then we'll see where we go from there. Um, okay. Would you agree? It's easier to find a wide receiver in the third versus an offensive line. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this year specifically, am I going to get into individual guys? No, Jeff, I'm not. But in terms of overall draft history, and especially more recently, is it easier to find receivers than it is offensive line? A thousand percent. There's just there's just more of them out there, you know. And a college game is really focused around them. So, um, yes, like very, very much so. I I agree with you. Justin doesn't want to see Lazard on the field. <laughs> Who does? Who does? Um, Highlander Prime says, I bet that two of, uh, of Douglas' top eight players will be the first and second round. So trading back and get a second round still gets him two of his top eight favorite players. But how do we know that? Like we're saying that he has some guy, like his seventh and eighth players, the, uh, all the other teams are not going to like as well, and they're somehow going to slip to 35. You know, I don't know. <laughs> um what's what's the what's the cost to get up to six i think it's gonna be like a second and a fourth if i had to guess off the top of my head second second and a fourth harold says my wildest hot take is is trade back and draft byron murphy and trade back into the first and grab wide receiver offensive line then grab whichever position you didn't draft in the third so many so many scenarios running through your head harold right because there's just nothing going on i just can't wait for it to happen and we just see right <laughs> we just gotta we just gotta see so many scenarios um mike says i'm not in favor of drafting bowers at 10 but i think he would open up an additional level of the field in 12 personnel just by being a dependable short pass option and move blocker still want malik yeah he adds something to the offense undoubtedly he does and again it's not a 12 personnel thing it's really 11 personnel thing now uh, yes there's gonna be 12 personnel sets but i think he's more of a receiver than he is like a true inline wide tight end so um okay let's see is that the new jersey yes yes the new it's new rogers Neighbors next to Tyreek Hill. No, no. He Clemens was a flash in a pan. But he, like, what, what, what flash? Where, where did he show a flash, Phil? I'm not, trying, I'm not just saying this. Like, I'm not being dick to you, but I'm like legitimately asking. Like, when did Clemens make good plays? Like a few and far between. He did not look great last year. You know. So hard to be a tough guy when they show you doing self-centering meditation on hard knock. It's not even that. Like, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, you really got to be able to back it up before you start talking shit to guys in the NFL level. Like, they're 300 and 350 pound, like, tough guys, all of them. So, to, for like, for you to be one of the toughest, like, for you to want to be tough amongst the tough, you really better make sure that you at least play well first. And he didn't do that. And he talks like he's amazing. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, if they don't draft, or if they don't get a receiver in, in round one, what's their best uh, route to filling out the room in your mind? Round three, free, round three, and free agency. That's that's what I would do. I would, I would, and it doesn't have to be round three. Round three or four, right? Like seventy-two versus what's what's our picks in the in the fourth? Like whatever, one hundred two and one eleven, whatever the hell it is. Could you get a receiver capable of being like a a four in the fourth round? Yes, I I do. I, I think you you can grab a guy there, um, who would be worthwhile. So. I would say a third or a fourth round pick and a Boyd. Or I, I guess Odell Beckham. I'm not so high on Odell Beckham, but give me uh give me Boyd and like a third or fourth round guy if they are to get a, a, a tackle in, in the first round. So um okay. Based on Beckton's strengths and weaknesses, do you believe he'd be better suited for guard instead of tackle? Maybe now because like he is lacking some movement. Um, but being six, seven inside is not, it's not easy. It's not easy. And like, 
don't just assume because he's in the inside he doesn't have to move a lot too it depends on the scheme he goes to like if it's power okay but like inside zone and stuff like that or like outside zone if you have to if he has to like reach a one tech at three tech uh good luck with Vecton. like he's he's lost a little bit of that so we'll see you there's even a scenario where Vecton comes back as a backup now do i think that bridge is most likely burned because of how he you know talked about keith carter and the coaching staff hack it um, on social media, I think it should. I think he should be kind of blacklisted at this point because I just think he's immature, realistically. Again, and I've kind of always spoke like that about Becton, even in his first and second year. I feel like people got on me for a little bit, but he's he's definitely a mature man. Like he just says, he, you know, the changes has handled the big bust and you know talking about a fatty is like whatever. He's just he's definitely immature. And then the call out or not call out, but to comment on somebody's post about calling out a uh, Keith Carter offensive line coach and like laughing emoji it. Or uh, he like he responded like laughing emojis, and then what did he do about Hackett? Somebody somebody was talking about like the game plan being drawn up in in crayon, and like he quoted it and like like laughing emojis again. So I I just think he's immature. I don't want I really don't want him back. I'm sorry, you know. So uh, better uh, Devils better fire and hire a new coach. No reason. Yeah, man. Um, Devils were greatly disappointing this year. They need to get tougher, uh, more tough, not tougher. Um, they go down early. They all just have sour puss looks in their face. I think he sure, even though he's a good player, just such a bitch. And they they need to find a goaltender too, like a consistent goaltender. Um, them not being in the playoffs this year was disheartening. It really was. And on top of that, like obviously the Nets missed, and then the Mets were sucking to start the year. But the Mets have won however many games in a row. They're like ten and eight now. They were like two and eight, and now they're I think they're ten and eight, eleven and eight, something like that. I think they have the Dodgers tonight, but. They they swept the Pirates who were on a hot streak. They they uh they've been doing some work. I think they beat up on the Brewers. Was it the Brewers? Um, but for some reason my my TV safe service is not working with SNY. So I don't know what's going on there. Trade up to five and draft neighbors. <laughs> yeah, neighbors. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm with that. I, sign me up. Sign me up. OBJ is a diva. Uh, the two fourth round picks will be would be a wide receiver and a running back. In in the world, we grab a a uh, receiver. I mean a, a a tackle in the first round. Is that what you're saying? Olu then lad uh neil says great show joe everything uh enjoying the deep film reviews on jets x factor would would love to get a wide receiver with our first round pick if latham uh marvin harrison jr neighbors are gone who do you pick uh if those got if those are gone it's odunze i would say it's odunze yeah it's odunze and then probably bowers in that scenario and i really i just don't want i just don't want to deal with it i just want to come here on thursday night I'm going to have a, quite a few beers with my friends. I'm going to come on here with you guys, have quite a few beers. I want some call-ins. I want some celebration. I want some good draft talk. I don't want the Bauer shit, dude. I just, I'm so done with the negativity on Jets Twitter and stuff like that. And and having, like, the, the, the one guy on Twitter said I didn't, I I wouldn't draft him to the fourth round. Have any one of you guys ever heard me say I wouldn't draft Bowers to the fourth round? So, like, people just putting words in my mouth. Like, oh, Blewett said that, you know, because all it takes is somebody to say, oh, Blewett said that he wouldn't draft him to the fourth round. And then like that person's like, oh, Blewett said he wouldn't draft him to the fourth round. Like that's the new thing. It's like, not, not, not true. There's like people saying I hated JJ. That's, that's just, that's just inherently false. It is just because I wouldn't draft him at four. doesn't mean I hate him. You know, I love them where they got him. That was awesome. So uh, Sutton didn't show for voluntaries. Get him for one of our fours. Oh yeah, Rob. Now now we're talking. Like if you get, it, it, hey Latham, Latham in the first round. Like the Jets are going to sit there and say, hey, if Odunze is here, we're taking him. If if not, we're going to trade that fourth round pick that's on the table for for Sutton. Oh yes, Latham Sutton. Okay. All right. Um, which quarterback prospect you worry more of the Pats getting? Um, obviously you have Caleb who's going first. Um, you have. You have prop. I don't. I, the betting favorites were apparently to Jaden Daniels uh, the last few weeks, but then it's shifted a little bit to Drake May, or at least more so to Drake May than it was in the last few weeks. Um, I can tell you that in in again in passing while watching Neighbors and a little bit of Brian Thomas Jr., I was not thrilled with what I saw from Jaden Daniels. Um, in terms of like you know hanging on to reads, not getting through his reads quick enough. Um, you know having a slow trigger, having to really see things open at times. I'm not blown away with Jaden Daniels. Again, in a very shallow studying of him, not even studying him, but just a shallow watching of him. Um, I'm not super concerned if they get Jaden Daniels. Um, so I guess like Drake May, just because he's the unknown. You know, I don't I don't really know about uh, the other guys. So, uh, speed receivers rarely pan out in the NFL. Yeah, yeah, that's like part of the problem with like. Brian Thomas Jr., right? Is right now like he's a raw guy, big, tall, fast. Big, tall, fast doesn't always work. X Stephen Hill. Even watching Steve, and, and this was like me not like very novice watching football. Like I had no idea what the hell I was talking about realistically. And whatever, 20, we drafted him in 2012. 
even watching his Georgia highlight film, he was catching the ball with his body. I was like, oh, I don't know. Like this guy does not even look good on highlight tapes, you know? So um, Sutton looking for a new contract. Why would the hell would we do that? It's it, it depends. Obviously, yes, it depends on, on the contract. But if you could sign him to a relatively reasonable deal, you know, $14 million, whatever it is, and extend him, I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Uh, ben says, who do you think is the dark horse? Uh, who, who do you think is a dark horse, most improved player in 2024? Uh, you can't say McDonald Pittman. I think Gibson has a chance with Rogers at quarterback, but like, like, again, what did Gibson prove last year? What did he do? That was genuinely impressive on any place. You know, I don't know. Um, most improved player in 2024 from the roster right now. Uh, I, I, I like immediate names that come to mind. Tony Adams, another year in, in the defense. I could see Jeremy Ruckert if we aren't to draft a, a tight end or sign a tight end. He's going to be forced into that tight end two role. So I would say those two off the top of my head. Yeah. Uh, I'll never understand why so many are obsessed with a trade back JD draft record in rounds three to seven is abysmal. And and, and most of the NFL, it's it's abysmal in rounds three to seven. Realistically, he's had some hits. He's had Eccles. He's had Michael Carter the second. He's had some UDFAs. He's had Bryce Hall. He's had Michael Carter, Michael Carter the, the first, um, who I would say it, for the fourth round pick, his first year was you know semi-successful. So um, I wouldn't say it's abysmal, but uh, just in the NFL in general, it's not good. So yeah, people losing their minds like, oh my God, I wouldn't trade that fourth round pick to get up. It's like, dude, it's a fourth round pick. The chance that the, the, you'd sign up for a solid depth player in the fourth round pick. So you're going to let the fourth round pick be the difference of like not getting Odunze. I, I, I'm not so obsessed with draft picks. Now I'm not saying that I'm just willing to give them away, but I'm really not going to lose my mind about a third or a fourth round pick, you know? So, uh, just when says, if we restructure JFM, DJ Reed, and then trade Zach, it can, it, it can get us 28 million. It depends on what exactly the restructure is with JFM, you know, what the extension is with DJ Reed. Um, and then Zach Wilson, $10 million. Who's going to take on his $10 million. I think, I think realistically this is over with Zach Wilson by the end of draft weekend, but it's probably something more like, you know, we trade a seventh for their seventh and, uh, and, uh, you know, you eat half the salary, you know, or something I'm like, they're going to have to eat some of that money. They're not saving all $10 million with Zach. I would give somebody a six round pick to take Zach's $10 million. I, yeah. I would give somebody a six round pick to take him. I really would. $10 million is, is, is Boyd and Bakhtiari, you know? Um, so let's see. Um, AR had a phenomenal group with green Bay in his early years. Yeah, it was, it was it was Greg Jennings. Oh, it was Greg Jennings, Jordy Nelson, and uh, was Driver still there? Or did Driver leave when Favre left? But Devontae wasn't there yet. So Devontae got drafted in like it's like 2014, 15. Has he been in the league for 10 years already? Has it really been that long? I remember getting Devontae in like a fantasy football draft and like him not being good for the first two years and then getting rid of him and then him absolutely blowing up, you know? So um Guy says, wouldn't it be wise to wait uh, until how, how the season unfolds before investing in New Jersey? Well, one, I go to the games, every every single home game and, and some away games, you kind of have to have the New Jerseys. Um, and again, it's a personal preference thing. I guess, yeah, sure, if you're smart, Guy, but I've admitted quite a few times that I am not smart and I get I have impulse buying problems. So they came out and I was like, oh, let's get one, two, three. <laughs> you know? So uh, yeah, Jordan Nelson and Devontae. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about you. I, I did forget about Jordy. Outlaw. Oh, hold on. We got a super chat from Marvin Guns. I'm doing two seconds of coffee. All right. Um, why did Bill Belichick quit as Jets head coach after one day? Do you know? I never understood that. Wasn't it something? And again, so so this was in what, like 98, 99, whatever year this was. I, I, and I, I think I met it this like two weeks ago on the stream. I do want to get better Jets history. Um, but wasn't it something to the effect of him not wanting to be under Bill, Bill Parcells shadow? That's what I believe it to be. If it's something else, somebody tell me in the chat. Um, I'm not the, this is a question for like older Jets fans. Again, I was like five, six years old. So, um, not like I have knowledge of the situation because I like, read it in the newspapers, but I'm pretty sure it was because of, of Parcells and he didn't want to be under Parcells, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Good question. Cause I, you know, somebody in the chat answer. I need to watch my like, jets history and like read books about the jets history. Cause we're like, Oh, Altoon and this guy and Marty Lyons. Like, I don't know. Like I just, I never really got into the, the history. So, so much. Uh, Outlaw says, how do you feel about uh, Malik Williams? I'm hearing a lot of good things about him. Would you take him the third round? I don't know. Outlaw again, 
you, you seem relatively new. Um, I don't really do much past like the first round guys and the top of the first round guys, just because I do other reviews for Jets X Factor. Um, I have to have not, I don't have to have reviews out, but I've done reviews from like Ruckert, Carter, Warren, Tony Adams, all the way up to Sauce to Sauce and Garrett Wilson. So I don't have time to watch three level three rounds of prospects, especially considering you know full time job, uh, new dad. I don't I don't have the time. I can tell you that uh, after the draft, anybody I will have a very strong opinion of them. Do I know guys in the third round? No, I don't. Uh, are you as unhappy with Tyrod Taylor as a backup as I am? No, Highlander Prime. Why? Like, who was who was a better option out there? Like Gardner Minshew was out there. He he got a basically a starting spot with like the Raiders, right? Or or, or at least a somewhat starter spot. Jacoby Brissett got you know a start a, a quasi starting spot and a lot more money with new England. So like who signed out there for just as much money who you'd want? Like you have to give me a name because I don't, I don't see a name out there who I'd rather have Tyrod Taylor. Yeah. He's been injured. If you watch him with the giants last year, how much pressure he was getting, it was stupid. And I have, I had the review Like he was not helped at all with the giants and he actually performed like relatively well. Um, Tyrod Taylor is the best quarterback we've had actually play, you know, or I'm sorry, he, he didn't actually play. He's the best quarterback we've had minus Aaron Rodgers since easily since Fitzpatrick. And he's probably been better than Fitzpatrick. He might be the best quarterback we, we've had on our team, again, minus Aaron Rodgers, in the last 15 years. Why are we hating on Tyrod? I'm not hating on Tyrod. Unless they're going to give me a better a better name out there who we could have gotten for just as much or you know, or even cheaper because I'm not spending $15 million to sign Gardner Minshew. There's no way. In terms of a $5 million contract, no. Yeah, I'm not with you here. Honor upon, that's fine. Got us on IV2, a, ABT. Yeah, it's do you do you do the 15-year or, or the, fi- the fifth-year option with him? 14, 15 million dollars for a guy who's played, you know, one full season in the last three. Gonna be interesting. Quick question: Are we gonna resign Hassan Reddick? I think they're more likely to not to 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 resign him now that they did not get a uh, a fourth round comp pick for for uh, Huff. Driver Jennings, yeah, Driver Driver was very old those years, right? Down Driver, because his heyday was with Farf. Um, I did forget about Nelson though. Nelson Jennings, and then I don't know if Devontae was involved in there. But again, one of his top groups ever. With I would say overall, overall team, considering health, it's it's gonna be his best collective offense around him ever. If they are to get another receiver. And even maybe even now you have you have an argument. Um okay. Uh a kid in a candy store with carte blanche. I don't know the fuck that means. I don't know, Sluggo. I don't know what what is that unless I'm maybe I'm just an idiot. I, I have not slept a lot the last couple of days. So uh Garrett's a life for Jed. Yeah, I would like that. Uh Brees is great, run backs don't last long. Yes. Um the flaw with the weapons first logic is that there are there are six starting offensive tackles, but 21 starting receivers in this draft. Like, is there really 21 receivers in this draft? Like, are we being a little bit maybe too like mock draft happy here that all these guys are gonna be good? You know, um, needing backups at both positions is better to get what's the least available, or just get the best player. Like I'm not, I'm not, th- I'm not necessarily thinking about the third round and the first round. I was like, no, give me the best player. You know, um, you could grab that guy in the third round, and he could be great, or he could be our Darius Stewart. And, you know, it like we don't know. Obviously, the lo- the longer you go down in the draft, the less chance you have to hit. So, if these third round receivers were so good, they'd be the first round receivers. And obviously, good players push other good ones down. So, I get that thinking, but at the same time, I'm not going to be like, oh well, you know, yeah, it's just draft there. It's just better at receiver. So we'll just we'll just draft the guy in the third, and that that will work out. Like it's it's worked out so well for the Jets in the past. You know, and I'm not I'm not saying it's like bad way of thinking because I think in general you are right that you have a better you have a better chance to grab tackle receiver um, and that working out than receiver tackle because the tackles are undoubtedly going to be worse and, and slimmer pickings and receivers at, in, 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 at 72, but I'm not letting that adjust to my thinking at 10. I'm not, you know, because again, and then wh- with that tackle in the, in the third or no, we're into a whole different direction with that. I'm not going to get into that. Okay. Uh, Clemens flash on one jet tries film. Did he though? I don't know. He got in a fight with Jeremy Rucker and like Jeremy Rucker kind of held his ground with him and he weighs 30, 40 pounds less than him. So I don't know. Okay. Uh, totally agree. Becton is immature for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I don't think, I don't think you could really, I don't think you really argue that, you know, he's, he's, he's kind of, he's a baby, you know, he, and he was, he was okay for a little while um, when he wanted to play and stuff. And he was talking to Rogers, but overall um, he was never one of my favorite players. And I said that, 
pretty frequently. I was like, listen, I'll root for the kid. He's a jet, but in terms of like me buying this dude's jersey and, 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 and wearing it, no, like he's just, he's not my cup of tea in terms of how mature he is. So, um, Stu, he's still a kid, all this stuff. Like, yes. Um, I don't really care about Taylor the one making the statement in the first place because he's not a jet and he's retired. Um, and I've seen plenty of more mature 24 year olds, you know, uh, like, yes, is he 24? Sure. And is, is him being 24 versus Stu's 24 or my 24 different? Because, you know, I'm sure Stu and I did not have as much expectations on us. Like, yeah, that's, 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 that's part of it as well. Like he has expectations. So he, he's going to have to act a little bit more buttoned up and stuff like that. But, you know, sauce doesn't act like this. Garrett doesn't act like this. Brees doesn't Brees does have a little twinge of like liking stuff sometimes. Like he gets a little bit into his feelings, Brees the tiniest bit. Um, but yeah, like pretty much every other draft pick we've had, minus you know, Elijah Moore has not acted like that. You know, I don't I don't know. I I, I get it, like being being forgiving to the guy who was 24 years old, but he's still not mature. Like I'm not gonna def I, I get the defense, but I'm not going to it's not an excuse, I'm not gonna say. Right. If rather is there in the fourth, do we take him? I would say yes, but I also don't think that he's there in the fourth. It's it's seeming like there's some rumors that he might actually be like a late first or early second, mid second round guy, which I don't know if that's true. Again, just transparently, I don't I'm not paying attention to quarterbacks at all because who gives a shit about quarterbacks right now? Um, but I think he's gonna go earlier in the fourth. Earlier in the fourth. Uh yeah, this whole this whole uh Taylor the one thing. Again, Taylor the one's on the Titans. I don't really care about him. He could say whatever he wants, but when you're on a team who you're hoping or maybe potentially resign you or even a, a team who may be called, like let's say the lions are going to sign, you know, uh, Becton and, you know, I don't know, Dan Campbell and, and Sala hit, hit traps together at the gym. And he calls him and says, you know, Hey, uh, what's, what's going on with this guy. And, and Sala could be like, Hey, listen, man, like, I'm not trying to be whatever here, but the kid's kind of a douche. You know, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I'm just I'm being a little bit, uh, you know, dramatic right now, but like, oh, we don't really like them. You know, we had some problems, this and that. Like that shit spreads. So like, it doesn't look good for you to 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 call out coaches on social media. It's just not a good look. It's stupid. Realistically, it's just stupid. You know. So, um, liking Beckham as a player is different than liking him as a person. I want Beckham to have success, but it is what it is. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like I don't I don't have to like every single person on the Jets. But I'm gonna root for hell when they play for the Jets. You know, um, so Belichick was good friends with Hess, but Hess died and he didn't know Woody well enough, whereas Kraft and Belichick had a great late. Okay, that was the reason I thought it was more Parcells. But okay, there you go, Mike. Or there you go, whoever asked from from Mike. Uh Bauer should not be considered at 10. Yeah, it depends. It depends on who's there. Which actually I'll go into my big board a little bit. I don't know if you guys want it. It's eh, maybe I won't do maybe I'm I'm gonna hold off on the call ins. I'm sorry. Just because it's already 7 36 and I'm I'm still a little bit behind the chat. So if anything, I'll just cut it early. Um, I don't want to make it a thing where I'm gonna do call ins for like just 30 minutes. So um again, what we're gonna do is Thursday night, we'll see what happens. I don't know, I don't know how it's gonna go on here. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> Thursday will be interesting. Next Friday, I'm hundred percent streaming for the draft, or I'm hundred percent doing call ins. And then post the you know the draft and I was getting back into a normal schedule. It's going to be in whatever order: Sabo, Nania, Colin, Solo rotation. And then one of those solo or um or uh solo or uh Colin shows. I'm going to replace with something else. <laughs> we'll see. I'm excited. We'll see. I'm, I'm hoping it works out, but I don't know. I really don't know. It's up. It's it's a thousand percent up in the air. But if it happens, I'm going to be giddy. I will be giddy. Uh, Tower Tower is a great backup, great deep ball, can move, brings change of pace. Dude, his deep ball is amazing. He's such a good deep ball. I was gonna make like a compilation of it, but the problem with like the all twenty two um, um, views are just they're just so high up. They're not really like, really sexy highlight tapes. It's more beneficial to put like one play up and kind of like point him out with an arrow. Um, but he's a really really good deep ball. Really really good deep ball. I started watching the Jets in the eighties. Yeah, I was really like honestly like more mid two thousands. Um, I didn't get into football because my dad wasn't into football. I didn't really watch football. My dad didn't go to football games with my dad. Um, I went to football games with my friend and his dad, and they were Jets fans. And that's why I became a Jets fan. But I started to go with them a little bit later. If my dad was a, is, was a fan, I'm sure I would I'd probably like the Giants. And this would be, you know, Giants X Factor or whatever. I'd be Giants something competing with Jets X Factor. Fuck it, Jets X Factor. I'm a Giants fan, you know. But that's not the world that we live in. Um, so, yeah, I, I started off a little bit late, I would say, with the Jets. Like, I started really watching Jets. I was like... 10, 11, 12, and I really, really got into it, like a teenager. So backyard baller. Um, Tyrod would be one of the best Jets starters in my lifetime. I'm not even joking. Yeah, Rob. Seriously, right? Like in my lifetime, or let's say, let's say my lifetime of Jets watching, 
Favre was above him for for eleven games, right? We were eight and three. That that was the we were eight and three, and then hit shit hit the fan, right? So for eleven games, Brett Favre, Chad Pennington, non injured, or just Chad Pennington in general, Tyrod, right? Since I've been watching, again, early to mid two thousands, he's the third best quarterback we've ever had, minus again, Sans Aaron Rodgers on the team currently. Right. That's not even, that's, that's not even, I'm not trying to joke here. Like he's the third best quarterback we've ever, we've, we've had in the last 20 years. Any good safeties left? Yeah, there are quite a few. Uh, Quandre Diggs is still out there. I think Eddie Jackson's still out there, you know? So I um, hope you're right about Tyrod Joe. He just can't stay on the field, man. I, yeah, no, he's had injuries, but go back and watch his games last year with the, with the giants. Let's see. Ty, uh, Tyrod Taylor game log. How many, how many games does he miss prior to that? past couple of years i know i know he's missed uh, a few for sure for sure uh game logs regular season so it's kind of hard to tell exactly how much he was hurt for though right because it's not like he's he played in 11 games last year he started five of them even with a shitty giants team though like five five touchdowns three picks you know like it 64 completion percentage i don't know you'd like to see i guess more you know, health on his resume, but didn't, didn't this guy also, was that, was that the Texans here? Was that Texans or maybe no, that was charger. That was chargers, right? That was his rookie. That was Herbert's rookie year. He was supposed to start the first game of the season and then got like his lung punctured by a shot. I think that was Tyrod, right? So some of it's his fault. Some of it's him, his lung getting punctured by, by the doctor who should be fired. Um, but look at the offensive line he played the last two years. So if he's had injuries to the Giants, okay, I'm hoping it's a situation, or I'm not hoping. I know that the Jets situation offensive line is going to be much better than the Giants, so I get it. But um, in terms of like better options out there, if you're saying, and this is, to highlight, I think Highlander asked this before, um, it's, I, I think you'd have to throw out an answer to who you'd want over him. Like it's, I think it's easy to say, I don't like Tyrod, but you kind of have to say, I, I don't like Tyrod because we could have had this guy at this price. So until I'm presented that, I just don't see another. I don't, I didn't see really a better avenue for the Jets to get. Like, how much did Gar, uh, Gardner Min shoes contract? What did he get? He got a lot, right? He got like 15 million a year. Yeah, two years, 25 million dollars. Okay, so let's just say it's 12.5 million dollars. Are you willing to sign him to that? I am not for a backup. That's too much money. Uh, Brissett, I said uh, Jacoby contract. What did he get? Eight million dollars. Okay. You know, maybe okay. If you want, if you wanted, if you wanted him for eight million dollars, I understand that. With that being said, do you think Brissett would come to the Jets for eight million dollars or to the Pats for eight million dollars? Considering quarterback situations, probably the Pats, right? So it's not even realistic that he probably comes here. So then, past that, who was it? You know, and hopefully he never sees the field. Hopefully he does see the field. It's for ne- it's for kneel downs at the end of the season, or it's in week eighteen, and we're freaking you know, I don't know, 16 and one or 15 and one. And, and he has to come in for one game. Okay. That's fine. Tired only gets hurt against the jets as long as yeah, just exactly get the note non-contact red Jersey. That's a good one, Rob. It's true. Jets have heard him quite a few times. Um, last year, Brown's game. We heard him, right? Baker came in and beat us that game. That was the Isaiah Correll wipe reacts to the football game. Brutal, man. We've had such a brutal history. He has balls and it's good enough for me. I know quite a few quarterbacks who have balls. Sluggo. So I can I can present you quite a quite a list of balls. So if they're good enough, they're good enough. They have balls. Ben has balls. <laughs> I think I, I cannot confirm it, but um, which I don't know if they did a podcast this week actually. So maybe he only has one testicle. <clears throat> um, how would you use Bowers as a rookie to maximize his success? Seems like a static offense is an ideal for him. Yeah, I I just think it's screens, end rounds, you know, pop passes, jet sweeps. Like that's, that's there. Uh, you know, they didn't really do it a lot with, with, with Conklin. I think they did it like a time or two, but instead of guys like Gibson and, and Garrett or whoever it would be running those end rounds and stuff like that, make that, make that Brock. They did run some tight end screens, undoubtedly to, to Conklin replace that with Brock. And there's plenty of times where they're, you know, they, they, they have slide routes, they have flat routes or bench routes or, you know, situations where Brock Bowers could, could chip um, and then be a check down option in, in the flat. Like, I think that's the best way to use him in year one. I don't think you're going to utilize him like a Debo where he's getting, you know, I don't know, five to 10 rushes a game plus the, whatever targets he gets in terms of the passing game. So, um, you know, I don't have to answer your question, but. Uh, I meant the Clemens thing as a joke. I just meant he's all show. Oh yeah, yeah. I I don't even know what you're necessarily talking about because I'm so far, you know, I'm so far back. But 
Uh, James says, how do you think the Jets will find their future franchise quarterback? I'd say you take a shot with their late, uh, late round pick this year and a higher pick next year to have them sit behind Rodgers. It just becomes like, at what point are you drafting a quarterback in this draft, James, and expecting him to be a legitimate player in the future, right? Like if you're drafting a guy in the sixth or seventh round pick as a sixth or seventh round pick, realistically, you're probably hoping he's an okay backup at that point. You're not really hoping he's going to be a long-term starter. Now, yes, do not give me the Brady. Do not give me, um, uh, uh, homeboy from freaking the 49ers. Don't give me those guys. Um, because realistically, you know, if you're drafting a quarterback in the sixth or seventh round, there's quite a few flaws. Like a guy like uh, people like the what's the Florida State kid's name, Jordan Tra- is it Jordan Travis? Like he might even be a fourth or a fifth round pick, but people are saying he's limited in terms of his upside because he's not he doesn't have the best arm and stuff. So at what point do you draft the guy where you're actually hoping for them to be a long term starter, a guy who can replace Aaron Rodgers? Probably you probably have to waste at least a fourth round pick, fifth, sixth, seventh round. You're probably not going to find that guy. Um, but in terms of the the future, like, yeah, this year I would like to develop a guy, draft a guy in the fourth or fifth round, see how it works out. Um, and then past that, you know, is it a free, is it a thing where you could reload and and go through free agency again? Is it a thing or is it a thing where, hey, you know, we kind of retool for a couple of years. We'll be, you know, seven, eight, nine win team, uh, kind of figure out our cap situation and then get aggressive and go and, and trade up and get a quarterback. Or is it a thing where you, first year Rodgers is gone, you trade up and get a quarterback? I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it. Um, it's something I thought about for 20 years until they signed Rodgers. So I'm going to live in the now <laughs> and not trying to think about the next quarterback. Cause that, that sucks. I don't want to think about that now, you know, um, brace me the same, uh, laughing emoji. Come on, man. 24 is 24. It's fine. Like, again, it's, this is a difference of opinion of, of what you're expecting from a 24 year old. It, you know, I didn't, I think Becton was immature in terms of the big bus stuff, wearing big bus t-shirts at, at his press press conferences. Like I, I like guys who listen, I'm the old man, like get off my lawn type of guy. I like the guys who showed up and work and, and Becton like to talk a lot. You know, I am a left tackle and then he goes to play fucking right tackle. It's like, no, you're not a left tackle. You're whatever will tell you to be. You've been injured the last two years, the last three years, just play damn football and shut up. You know, so like, I didn't like that. I don't, I don't like him. It just is what it is. You know, I don't, I don't know. And then on top of that, he got it. He got it. He got kind of whooped. You know? So. Yes, yeah, dude. I don't, I don't know if Stu is like Becton's dad or mom or something, but, uh, I think I've seen him in here for like, even on like videos and stuff like that, like defending Becton hard. Like, I, I'm sorry. I just, I, we have different difference in opinions. You, you think that 24 year old guys, you know, quote tweeting their coaches and, and stating I am a left tackle and all that stuff on social media is fine. I don't, you know, I don't like my guys uh, having down years and wearing big bus t-shirts, you know, wear a jet shirt, grind, play well, and then we'll all shut up the fans. But he like feeds into it. He, he's a guy who was quote tweeting guys with like five followers. Why? What's the, what is the point of it? So it's not my cup of tea. And if he's your cup of tea, fine. That's okay. He's not my cup of tea, right? We're not going to, we, it's agree to disagree there, Stu. Never going to agree with you there. So pod coming this week. All right. <laughs> Quick thoughts on Reddick. Uh, I like him a lot. I do. Um, different than, than Huff. Huff is more like straight line, explosive. Uh, maybe a little bit more like, maybe a little bit more like, like, con- like compact and powerful, like more of like packs a punch. Um, in terms of his rush, but Reddick is also better at using speed to power. He has better length. He's better in the run game. He's much more bendy. Um, he doesn't get as much pressure as Huff does. But with that being said, I think Huff was in a better situation in terms of like being, you know, being benefited by his teammates than a guy in um in, in Reddick was. Obviously, the Eagles are no slouches, but I, I think you know there was more situations where quarterback kind of ran into to Huff than I think quarterbacks ran into to Reddick. And then on top of Reddick's super high finishing rate in terms of getting sacks. When he gets there, he gets the quarterback down. And he's also towards the top of the league in forced fumbles. You know, he'll go after that ball. So uh, I really like Reddick. Reddick to me is, uh, you know, a top five to 10 edge rusher in, in the league in terms of overall, you know, run and pass. Obviously, Huff was a just as good as a pass rusher, but I think Reddick is much more well rounded than Huff. Now, in a perfect world, they just keep Huff and it is what it is. He's 25, Reddick's, you know, 29, 30. But at the end of the day, I think for this year, you got the better player. Um, now, do they sign him? You know, I'm hoping they do. We'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, see you, Phil. Uh, if we draft Bowers, what would happen to Conklin next year? I think you sign him. Why not? Right? Like, again, it's not it's not a thing where, where, where he's just going to be a strict Y tight end. Uh, 
I, I would say I it's hard to say, right? Because like Conklin has to agree to it. The Jets have to offer the right price. In my world, I re-sign Conklin and then you have a really good one-two punch, right? Why not? Uh, Jacoby Brissett is most likely going to be a starter. That's why he went to the Patriots. That was my number one choice. Yeah, no, but exactly. So, so you don't, you don't have your number. I don't know if you're going to ask this question, but he's not your number one choice. Minshew got 15, you know, $12.5 million a year. That was maybe your number two, but we're not signing him for that price. So then past Brissett and Minshew, who else was out there? You know, Beckton isn't preventing the Jets from drafting anyone. Not, well, not this year. He's not even, he's not even, you know, he's not even on the team. Uh, thank you for the show. I appreciate y'all. See you next week. If you're, if you're off, um, got a walk. Thanks Joe and everyone, uh, boners up jets fans, five, five and a wake up. All right. We'll see you on uh Thursday, maybe sluggo or Friday or whatever. I want to see you. Um, my man, Joey breakdowns, bro. You totally botched my most heartbreaking jets moment story at the end of last week's show. I, I totally botched your most heartbreaking jets moment story at the end of last week's show. Murdoch. Um, I cannot remember like 14 minutes ago. So do I remember exactly what happened with your heartbreaking Jets moment? And I bought me botching it. I, I don't remember. So I apologize for botching it, but you're going to need to retell me. If you want to retell me, great. I will promise I will do my absolute best to not botch it. <laughs> Did you give it a big board? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, okay. You're admitting your bias. I'm not his family. I played the position and see the talent. There is a huge difference between playing left tackle and right tackle. That's why you said it. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I, I don't like, why do we care? Why, what is, what is the Beckton stuff right now? I don't, who cares? He's not going to be on the team. He struggled last year. He's been injured. He was injured last year. If you're going to say that his, 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 his problems with, with his play were because of injuries last year, then either way, it's not good. Either he sucks and he wasn't injured or he was injured and he's always been injured. And that's why he sucked. So either way, it's not good what he did last year. Like why can't I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I think here, uh, Murdoch, you read the second part, skip the first. Yeah, that's my bad. Murdoch, there's there's quite a few chats in here, so sometimes I forget. But let's get into um, I'll get into the uh, the one thing I did want to mention too. I put it in the in the uh, in the uh, in my notes. Did anybody notice that Damian Woody completely did a 180 on his Carter Warren stance? Where a couple of months ago he's defending Carter Warren and saying that uh, you know he's a good developmental guy and all this stuff, and Jets fans should be faithful. I pretty much disagreed. I put up 35 plays of him struggling mightily last year, and he basically said something to the effect of like, "Oh, I don't understand development and all this stuff, and blah blah blah." We should support Warren. And then like two days ago, I see that same guy who was saying support Warren say basically something to the effect of Jets fans, you know, if I hear you guys bitching about not drafting a tackle in November, basically like insinuating like, hey, I'm team O-line. They need more depth. So it's like you both love the depth in Carter Warren who you're advocating to potentially start and trying to dunk on me when I was saying, no, he should unequivocally not be a starter. And then two months later, he's saying we need more depth. Kind of made himself look like an ass. So... You know, I don't know. Um, Woody must have watched your brain. Yeah, probably not. Probably, probably not. So um, I don't have, and maybe I should do like, there, there's so many like streams. I wish like Ryan's and stuff like that. Like so many good graphics of like timers and, and uh, little sheets and stuff like that. I know that adds it for the listeners. I don't have that capability at least yet. I'm going to slowly keep working on um, exactly how to get more technologically savvy, however you want to say it. So I don't have like any fancy graphics here. Um, what I will say is the big board. I'll start with the overall big board. And this one, I stayed more just to the guys I've, I've watched minus like Harrison jr. In terms of like doing a full breakdown, there's two guys in here. I didn't necessarily, um, like watch, watch, but overall big board. Um, this is considering it not the jets this is i i am not a i am not a uh jets fan in this this is just overall big board for the entire draft i have marvin harrison jr at one i have malik neighbors at two people are gonna hate this i don't care because i backed it up i have latham at three i have alt at four i have odunze at five i have fashanu at six i have bowers at seven Fatanu at eight and nine is Fuaga. So Harrison Jr., Neighbors, Latham, Alt, Odunze, Fashanu, Bowers, Fatanu, Fuaga. Now for the Jets, because that one is completely independent of the Jets. That's just how I feel about those players individually. And I might even move up Fuaga a little bit because my problem with Fuaga is for the is for the Jets specifically. I really do think he's gonna be a guard at the next level. Um, I think he may try out at tackle, but I just 
don't necessarily see it working unless he somehow figures out how to get more laterally quick, which I don't, I don't know, you know, um, uh, let's see another question here. Uh, Harold says neighbors is good, but I would not give up more than a second round pick next year to move up. So Harold, if, if, if I can make you sign a dotted line right now and I said, and I said, just that fourth round pick is going to get you neighbors. You're not going to give up that fourth round pick. You're not gonna give up one eleven. Like that's the sticking point to you, Harold. Are you sure? Are you sure, Harold? You know, I don't know. A fourth round pick difference in no neighbors or potentially like Brock Bowers or Fashanu. I'm giving up that fourth round pick. That's about where I probably draw the line, but I'm not going to lose it. If that, if that's, if it's, if it's, if it's that fourth round pick, maybe, maybe you're different. If that you draw the line in the sand there, that's fine. Um, but to me, one eleven is, is not going to, is not going to prohibit me from getting a guy in, uh, in, um, in neighbors. So, uh, past that, I would, that is less than second next year. I, I would, that is less than second next year. You would not give, I'm, I'm saying a second end and the fourth. I'm not, I'm not saying just the fourth. I'm saying the second plus the fourth, Harold. If, if I didn't, if I didn't clarify that, I'm, I'm sorry. If, if I, uh, misconstrued you're saying, I'm sorry, but, um, past that jets again i wish i had a little big board where i can write these in slowly um number one for me is marvin harrison jr i am personally willing to give up a first round pick next year again even in a situation where it doesn't work out i don't you know again knock on wood i don't want any of this shit to happen i think at the worst the jets are going to be you know whatever 23 24 25 whatever it may be so you're talking about a late first round pick for harrison jr do it um i'm in that camp i think he could be an absolute stud and you add another stud to garrett wilson plus all the guys we have um holy shit like that's gonna be really fun so um i'm not obsessed with future draft picks so give it up i'm cool with it for harrison jr um neighbors is is easily my two i think it's marvin harrison jr gap neighbors um i'm willing to give up a second and a fourth to go up and get neighbors at at five or six or whatever it may be but he's very easily second to me i would say quite a considerable gap again um and then it's odunze and again, this is where it comes into effect, like the Jets and and me wanting that weapon over the tackle because I specifically like Latham more than Odunze. I specifically like maybe even Alt more than Odunze, but because of where I want the Jets to specifically go, I have Odunze as as uh, as uh, as my third. So Harrison Jr. first, neighbor second, Odunze third. I have Latham at four. Um, one, I think he's a great fit for the for the scheme, you know, in terms of them going to more counter and power. Um, I think he's largely overrated or, or underrated because of one play against Michigan where people say he struggled that game when realistically he actually kind of dominated that game minus one play. Um, he has some issues in terms of like holding and stuff like that. He's had six holding calls, I think, the last two years. Other ones were false starts and some things like that. I, I think he's... I think people see Becton and how he didn't work out and just attribute that all to, to Latham. And I, I don't think that's good practice. So uh, Latham is my four. Alt is my five. Um, I don't hate Alt. I just think that Alt, for people who are out there, and it seems like everybody, when they talk about Alt, talks about how clean he is and how perfect he is. And maybe he has a lower ceiling because he's not the best athlete in the world, but he's a really, really high floor. I think he's a high floor, but I also think his floor may be, may be being overstated because I see him struggling to 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 you know to anchor um, and to deal with power at the collegiate level. Now you bring that at the NFL level. Um, even if you do get stronger, he's just so naturally high. It's really hard for him to get under people. So um, that and then he plays at length too much. You know where he doesn't really you know kind of kind of absorb guys and drive them. He plays at length a lot and he ends up being off balance because of it. So I like alt. I'm just again, I mean, he's just not my number one tackle. It is what it is. Um, I would say Bowers is my six again. So this is for all the, 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 the blue bits of Bowers hitter guy. You know, he's my sixth overall prospect in this draft from the guys I've watched again, Harrison neighbors are Dunze, Latham, Alton, and Bowers. Does that mean I hate him? I don't think so. Um, so Bowers is my six. Again, this is just because more of the upside and, and if he does hit what he could mean to this offense again, I like Fashanu more as a player. You know, I might even like just individually Fuaga more as a player, but for the jets, Bowers is my six. Fashanu, uh, uh, Fashanu is my seven. Fatanu is my eight. Fuaga is my nine. And the only reason I have Fatanu over Fuaga is because I think there's an actual chance 
that, and I think there's a, a, a actual chance, I guess. I don't want to say an actual chance and really discredit Fuaga that much. I think there's a better chance that Fatanu plays tackle than Fuaga. So that's why I would have him over Fuaga. Um, and then past that, these are three guys who I've only really like heard about as like the next tier. I just wanted to make 12. Um, I would I would say Mims is probably my, my next one just because he's a freak of nature. And you're, you're going to talk about a freak of nature learning from Tyron Smith. Okay, sign me up. I would say my 11th on my big board is however you feel about these guys. Again, I don't want to necessarily speak on these guys without having the knowledge base I feel comfortable you know, with. Um, I would say Thomas Jr. or the Texas wide receiver, the, uh, Xavier Worthy, as 11. And then I think 12 is probably, I guess it's like Byron Murphy at that point. It's the only, only really guy I can think about past other receivers and stuff, maybe the other tackles. But um, Jets big board from 1 to 12. Marvin Harrison Jr., Neighbors, Odunze, Latham, Alt, Bowers, Fashanu, Fatanu, Fuaga, Mims, Thomas Jr. or or the or Worthy, and I would probably say Murphy. Uh, Murphy is the is the twelfth. I don't think they're going to do Murphy, but realistically, if they were to do Murphy, you trade JFM for Cortland Sutton. You know, now you figure out receiver. You got to tackle JFM's got. I don't know. I'm not, I'm I'm living in fantasy land here, but I I could see a world where they where they draft Byron Murphy. You know, um, because there's a world where last year they drafted Will McDonald, and none of us ever thought that would happen. You know, so what does Harrison Jr. have over Odunze? I would say uh, the route running is is pretty spectacular from what I've seen. And Odunze has quite a ways to go in terms of his route running. There is some like he's pretty good, like secondary releases and, and stuff like that. Um, but in terms of like press coverage and stuff like that and not blowing himself out to the sideline, I would say Marvin Harrison Jr. is a much more developed prospect in terms of his um, route running ability. Um, so. Let's see. Uh ABTs and OTAs, and they said he will be fine participating. Yes, somebody asked me if ABTs and be ready for camp. It seems like he's going to be. It's just, it's a little, you're a little bit nervous, right? Because what he's played in, he's played in probably what, like 13 games in two years. It was like seven games last year, like five this year or something like that. Uh, 12 games, I think maybe in the last two years. So you know, obviously the injuries aren't necessarily related. It's not like he tore his Achilles twice or, you know, he tore his Achilles and then his, and his calf or like, okay, you know, you had, you had problems with the same leg. It, I'm not so concerned about the triceps. It's more the fact of just that individual Achilles injury. How is he going to come back? Is he as explosive? You know, I'm not saying that he's a guy who just necessarily depends on his explosiveness because he's, he more so kind of thrives off of his technique, but have to be concerned about ABT. And so I'm hoping they bring back a McGovern because McGovern, I think would be a really good backup. Um, I don't think he fits the scheme the best that we're going to, or more so the power scheme. Um, I don't think he fits the best there, but I don't know how many better backup guards you're going to get backup centers going to get than McGovern, you know? So, uh, Stu says, I like Fatano because he reminds me so much of ABT coming out of USC. I actually think he's more developed than ABT. Yeah. Yeah. We're just not going to, I don't think Stu and I, it's, it's, I think, I think Fatano is the better athlete than ABT was, but in terms of technique, ABT's technique was amazing. Uh, amazing. Uh, when I was watching Fatano, I don't think he's as developed in terms of technique wise. We're talking about like athleticism wise. Okay. I'll give you that. But technique wise, I'm not there. I'm not there. Um, Harold says, I think Odunze will be really good. If I told you Odunze would be there at 10 and you could take him or trade up with next year's first and a third. Hold on, you're talking about so so Odunze at 10 or trade up with next year's first and the third this year for Harrison. And a third? Fuck. That's a really hard question, Harold. Man, because like then I'm then I'm kind of then I'm kind of being like a hypocrite there, right? Like if I if I don't say that I'll I'll trade him for like, oh, that third round pick's really gonna kill you, like that 72, but like 72 is a lot higher than like 111. So we're talking about a whole 40 picks up. But is is Harrison that much better than Odunze? I don't know. I, I my 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 brain says Odunze. Just take Odunze at ten there because you could save the pick. Um, you have that third round pick. You can have next year's first. So, you know, Harrison Jr. or Odunze a first and a third. You know, I, I would say Odunze the first and a third. But that's a really good question. That's a really hard one. Like legitimately very hard question. I like that. Um, I would trade down, uh, trade down draft JPJ and add a tackle that can learn from Smith w with a pick they gain Guyton. Okay. Now, who are they trading down with? Do we even like Tyler Guyton? Why do we like Tyler Guyton? I don't know. You know, no. Uh, 
where do you have Turner and other defenders? How realistic is it? I, I, so I haven't watched them. Nikoi, just because if they draft the defender, we're all going to absolutely lose our shit. And I don't want to waste time on something that the Jets are most likely not going to do. So I'm not going to just say, yeah, like I, I like Turner. I like there, there's a corner right uh, up high as well. Um, and then how realistic is it that Atlanta and Chicago pass on by receivers for defenders? Apparently, Atlanta is like really looking into to Turner. Um, and I don't really think who are their corners. I know there's a corner up there, but they only, they have uh, they still have um. Wow, they have a, they have a good corner. I'm forgetting his name, um, and I'm blanking out on it. Whatever. They, I know they have one corner. I don't think they have the second corner in their defense, right? So uh, I could see them going either way, but I haven't watched either one of these guys enough to be like, yeah, they're definitely going to take Dallas Turner. They're definitely going to take you know the uh, Mitchell, Quint, uh, Quint, uh, Qu- Quinion Mitchell. Thank you, Emto, and 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 uh, Nic- uh, is it Nikoi? I don't know if that's your name. Um, saying Mitchell, yeah. So I haven't watched them enough. Like I haven't. I haven't just because even like last year, last year, I assumed the Jets were going to trade a first for Aaron Rodgers. So I didn't watch any of the prospects last year, really like at all. Um, so then I knew like a couple of top guys and then so I was kind of prepared a little bit for the draft when it came. And then Will McDonald happened. I'm like, dude, I have no fucking idea. Like I just started watching these guys because we, I just figured out a couple of weeks ago that we had our first round pick. So I actually kind of delved into it. And then from them, for them to take McDonald, I just had no idea. So um, I try to pour my time into things that I think are actually valuable. And like me watching tape of Dallas Turner, like who's going to watch every review? Who's going to give a shit? Nobody realistically, you know? So um, I haven't watched the defenders. Um, the whole thing about Salah saying ABT got hurt because they moved him around and JD agreed if, if him moving around is a reason for Fatanu, then I, that would directly contradict that. Unless it's a thing where you're saying that, Hey, you're going to draft, you're going to draft Fatanu and Fatanu is going to be a left guard. And then ABT says that right guard. It's not like, because he plays right tackle, he's going to have to play right guard. So you could draft Fuaga and then move again, Samson to the bench. And then he could be a, a very good swing left guard, right guard. Um, I don't know if that's the best allocation of resources, but at the same time, they're kind of doing a similar thing on the defensive line. The thing is with defensive line, you can kind of sub guys in, you know, um, now could they in a world, you know, have a jumbo set, have that extra tackle in and put John Simpson out there on rundowns in certain situations. Yeah, sure. But how many times is that going to happen in a game? Two, three, five, you know? So, um, yeah, let's see. Uh, did you flip flop Odunze Latham before you said Latham three Odunze four? Yeah. So, uh, Murdoch Latham is my three in my overall big board. Um, in my Jets big board, Odunze is three, and and Latham is four. So yes, for the Jets, I have Odunze above Latham. Overall, as a prospect, I like Latham better than Odunze. If that makes that that yeah, that makes sense. It does. So, uh, AJ Terrell. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Emto. Um, AJ Terrell is a Falcon stud cornerback. Okay. The guy who got concussed tackling Brees and Brees got fined for it. Yeah. And all Brees did was like lower his helmet for contact too. Like, it, like he was, he was, he was, he was preparing to get hit and he dropped his shoulder. And like the guy ran into his helmet. That was such a bullshit, uh, penalty on that one. But yeah, uh, Terrell, but like opposite of Terrell, I don't really think they have anybody. So I could see them going corner there. I can see them going, um, you know, I can see them going the end. I don't, I don't really think they have many studs on their defensive line. And the Bears, I can see going either way. The Bears need, you know, a, a ton. But is it a thing where like, hey, we're, we're, we're drafting a quarterback early or at number one. Do we want to surround him with studs They're just everywhere on offense? I can see that being a thing as well. So um, the Bears are a huge wild card at nine for the Jets, especially if they say at 10. Um, you know, the Chargers are, are, are a big pick for us. Um, you know, do the Cardinals trade out? That's a huge, that's a huge swing. Um, and then obviously the John, I kind of mentioned all the fucking teams, right? Who aren't drafting quarterbacks. So yeah, thanks, Joe. You just named the top 10. They're all, they're all, yes, thank you. That's why you're here for the knowledge. You know, it's just, it's gonna be crazy. Like every single pick, you're like, you're like biting your fingernails. It's, it's, it's very fun. I'm very, very excited. Six, six days, right? Um, Lauren says, if we keep him in one spot, I like it, but people keep mentioning we can move Fatano around. So, so draft him. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lawrence. And this is the thing I talked about before. It's like you're you're a rookie, you're swimming. You just played your college season. You went into the, you know, you went to the senior bowl, the the, the games, you know, all, all of that shit, the practices. Then you went to the combine. Now you're going through meetings and 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 personal workouts and all this stuff, flying to see different teams, and then you get drafted, and then you go to camp, and then it's and then you know, mini camp, whatever, OTAs, and then it's training camp, and then it's preseason, and then it's the season. It's a long stretch for these rookies. And now you're asking, hey, you know, you're going to play left tackle, left guard, right guard, right tackle. Like it's just, it's, it's a lot on a rookie's plate. So it, 
in in general, I do agree that it's like not the 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 smartest thing to to be moving rookies around like that. But um, I I get the point. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Martin says, "Would you rather die due to being lit on fire or drowning?" Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna say drowning. I'm gonna say drowning. Like at the end of the day, like you you know. I feel like it's relatively quick. Like you kind of just pass out. Fire can last for quite a bit. Now, is there is there? Am, it, it, can I also get smoke inhalation there? And like, I'm in a burning building, so I'm gonna pass out anyway. Maybe if it's a burning building, I just take that. But you're gonna pass out in like ten seconds running through the fire anyway. I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with drowning just because less painful. You know, um, Stu says, are you comfortable with our defensive tackle depth? And uh, we're ha- were you happy with our run defensive last year? And do you think it'll be better this year? Um, am I happy with the defensive tackle depth? No uh am i happy with our run defense was i happy with our run defense last year no and do i think it'll be better this year yes but only because of the jets hopefully being or or definitely being in more positions where teams can't just consistently run it down their throat and 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 waste time off the clock you know this year hopefully the jets are going to be up by a touchdown or two on some of these teams so i think the run defense just because of the offense being better will be better in terms of like numbers wise and things like that but in terms of the actual players i think they downgraded you know, Al Woods to foe two is a downgrade. Uh, Jefferson to 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 um, uh, Kinlaw to me is a, is a downgrade. Now, the only and, and this doesn't have to do with the run defense, too, but it's just with the defensive tackle room in general. The only way I can see it being like supplemented and it actually making sense or being better than last year is more so pass rush wise, not run defender wise, because if they were to move JFM to the inside on pass downs, I think that's the best like defensive set for the jets to, to maximize their talent, I guess is the proper way to say that because if JFM is on the edge, then again, you, you, let's say it's JFM and Reddick. You have JJ and McDonald sitting on the bench. You have, you have two first round picks sitting on the bench while Kinlaw who's proven nothing in his career is playing. Why move JFM to the inside, put out JJ. And then it's JJ and Reddick or, or, or yeah, JJ and Reddick and you sub in McDonald sometimes like that's the move to me. Now I don't think JJ should be playing there in, in any type of run situations, but in terms of the pass game, uh, you know, in pass situations, I would definitely move JFM to the inside. But again, it has nothing to do with the run defense question you're asking. So I would say, um, no, I'm not. Uh, and I am I was not happy with it last year. You know, I think that the offseason is great. Smith, Mike Williams doing everything they've done. The only flub to me so far has been defensive tackle. I just don't understand not giving, you know, Quentin Jefferson or, or, or at least prioritizing Quentin Jefferson and answering the phone and getting him back versus Kinlaw, who made double the money, who is not as good of a player. He was not as good of a player. Like, if people are like, oh, well, you know, uh, Jefferson came to the Jets, and he exploded with the Jets, and Kinlaw could could be just as good, you know, coming with the Jets and kind of, like, like raising his stock. The thing is, like, yeah, sure, but Quinn Jefferson was a better player with the Seahawks in 2022 than Kinlaw was with, with the with the Niners in 2023. So however you want to however you want to kind of defend the Jets there, uh, Jefferson just a better player to me. Now Kinlaw has the, maybe the higher ceiling, but who gives a shit about a ceiling? You know, Golson had a high ceiling. Who gives a, who gives a shit? You know. Um, so yeah, I'm not I'm not happy with how they handled defensive tackle. Everything else has been great. But that's that's the only thing I'm kind of pissed about is it's like Foto really. You know, I, I I did like him a little bit more as I went on. Um, I, I spoke about him. At first, I think I only watched three games, which is not a huge sample size. I thought it was enough to speak on him. I'm not going to say it was some like drastic turnaround, but I think he's okay. Like he's an okay run stuff and defensive tackle. That's that's about it. Okay at best. I think Al Woods was kind of a stud stuff uh, run stuffing D tackle. Um, so yeah, I think Arizona and the Giants will can't oh, will cancel out because if Arizona trades out McCarthy, oh okay, you're just saying either way, Harrison's going to be gone. Um, do you mind going in depth why you prefer Odunze over Latham for the Jets? Yeah, um, I kind of already spoke about it a, a little bit, David. It's it's really just because of the ceiling, you know, and and, and really this is all it is. I'll, I'll I'll really boil it down to this: Odunze will play, let's say, 70, 75 percent of the reps. You have Mike Williams, who might miss the first couple of games of the year. He might get injured during the year. So wide receiver depth is is a huge need, just like tackle needs a huge need. Um. But you have basically in, in, in 11 personnel and, and how you play it, you know, 60, 65 percent of, of the reps in today's NFL. Odunze is going to be a starter, play 70 percent of the reps where Latham, I think, is a better player than Odunze. But Latham, we're going to set the games at, let's say, six and a half, seven, you know, that he would play. Tyron Smith, let's say he plays 13 like he has. OK, that's four games. Let's give Morgan Moses three games. He plays seven games. 
you know? So would you rather take seven games of Latham starting or Odunze for 17? And then on top of that, Tyron Smith hasn't missed a playoff game. You know, Morgan Moses overall throughout his career has been, you know, knock on wood, pretty healthy. So let's say they are both healthy in the playoffs. Latham sitting on your bench for the Super Bowl, you know, whereas Odunze would be playing 75, 70, 70, 75 percent of the reps in the Super Bowl. So that's really it. It's about it's about one player is going to play more. And uh, I think that raises the ceiling. Now, again, long term, I completely understand the Latham thing or, or tackle. I do. Um, but I think this is a year where you kind of are pushing your chips all in. So let's freaking do it. You know. Uh, OK, Harold says uh, Byron Murphy does a really good job at holding his ground and denting the post on double team. There you go. Um, he can rush the passer and he would be good long term. Yeah, dude, like that's what I'm saying. It's it's not a thing that I necessarily want. But if you're if Byron Murphy is a stud and then you have two stud defensive uh, defensive tackles uh, inside of two stud defensive ends, like it's obviously it's maybe a little bit of overkill there. But like, holy shit, man. Again, allocation of resources. Now you have th- four first round, five first round picks on your defensive line. You know, JFM, who's making $14 million. You know, it's just uh, at a certain point, hey, shit, why, why don't we sign like, uh, I don't, and obviously it's different than the draft, but like, I don't know, sign up, sign freaking digs or something. Like so many, so many, uh, so many uh, you know, resources to the, to the damn offensive line or to the defensive line. Super chat from T Rivera. Uh, appreciate it. T uh, Rivera. Um, JD says he has 10 players to choose from in the first round. All options open, but I would trade up for uh, Harrison Jr. Neighbors without hesitation. Yeah, dude. So I don't know if you just got in here, but I've been saying that pretty much the entire stream. Rivera. Uh, that's where I'm falling right now. Um, Harrison Jr. For a first. Okay. Do it. Neighbors for a second and a fourth. Okay. Do it. Like, that's what I want to see. That's, that's the thing that sneakers to boots asked before. Like, you know, Odunze at 10. Okay. Nice cheers. Little couple swigs. If they trade up and get, and get neighbors or Harrison jr. That's one of like the sauce situations where I'm going to be running around my downstairs. Fucking, sc- you know, let's real estate. I'll be, I'll be screaming like a bitch. You know, I'm going to have quite a few of me. I'm going to overreact. That's what people do when they drink. I'm going to overreact. I'm going to come on here. I'm going to overreact and it's going to be fun, but I would be very excited. Very excited. If they did that, I want the same exact thing. So, um, I appreciate the, uh, the, the super chat. <clears throat> um, Murdoch says, okay, Joe, I'm going to re- rewrite the most heartbreaking jet story. I, I, I will notate part one. I'm going to just go back and just read part one this time or just part two again. Um, I like the guy they got from Arizona photo. Yeah, I think he's okay. I think he's okay. But Al Woods had like some like highlight run stuffing, uh, plays, uh, you know, uh, when he, before he came to the jets. So I would say I like Al Woods more than photo photo's okay. Photo's okay. Um, I also think the Jets re-signed Winfrey seems like an untapped potential. Yeah, Perry on Winfrey. He, he, he made somewhat of an impact when he came in. Um, Italian Eddie Ralph says, do I like the idea of signing Zeke Elliott? I did prior to seeing a lot of numbers about him that indicate that he was pretty bad in pass blocking situations and pretty bad in short yard situations. And those are both the things that we want him for. So maybe you go a different direction. Maybe you go like a, like maybe... I don't think a lot of people talk about him, but like Gus Edwards is out there. Like he's been always been okay with the Ravens. Like give me Gus Edwards, you know, or, or even like Jarek McKinnon. I don't know how much he's fallen off, but would I be mad with Zeke? No. Um, he could prove me wrong when I go back and actually watch him, but his numbers indicate that he fell off quite a bit on a serious note. Who is going to be the starting safeties? Are we really going to go out there? Well, Chuck Clark, if, if assuming health and he is the players he was with the Ravens, he's much better than, than, than Whitehead. That just is what it is. I don't care what anybody says. He's better than player than Whitehead. So you upgraded at strong safety. And then Tony Adams in his first full years of starts versus Tony Adams in his second first or her second year of starts, Tony Adams upgraded from last year's Tony Adams. Clark upgraded from Whitehead. Even even injured Clark, I think, is better than Whitehead. So I think the group is actually upgraded. Now, do I want just Ashton Davis as the three there? No, I would like to get a, a veteran depth player. You know who that may be. You know we'll see. Um, but again, like looking at the safety market and how cheap the contracts are for these guys, like. Would I be willing to sign Quandre Diggs for four or five million dollars there? And then like having a really good depth guy in Tony Adams. And then you have Diggs or, or yeah, Quandre Diggs and uh and uh Chuck Clark as your safety piece. Like I would be down with that. I'm I'm more concerned about the depth right now, though. I think you could add a starter. I think they could. Red uh Reddick did play three downs, right? And they did move him inside at times. Was he effective? Um, I don't think no, I don't think they moved him inside. They they might have moved him inside to like rush over a guard a time or two. Um, that I didn't, that I maybe just am misremembering, but no, they, they rarely moved him inside. Um, Stu, he, he was mostly rushing against the right tackle on the left side of the defensive line. Um, and he was effective all three downs. Yeah, for sure. 
safety's been a flub too, putting a lot of stock in Clark. Yeah, that's that's the problem. Uh, I really, really like Clark, but the problem is he tore his ACL last year, right? So uh, will Michael Clemens make the roster this year as maybe as a D tackle? I think he probably, like right now, if you're telling me gun to my head, is he on the roster this year? I would say yes. But my thing with Clemens is he went from like his rookie year, 270, playing defensive end and being a run stuffing guy there to being like 280, 285 and trying to move inside. 280, 285 is not strong enough for the inside. So you took the, you took like an oversized defensive end who already struggled with athleticism and added weight to him for him to not win to the inside. Like to me, just keep Clemens at 270, 275 and play him outside and let him jack up, you know, tackles and uh, tight ends who try to block him. But trying to move him to the inside this year, I think he got too fancy because like JFM can win to the inside because he's more athletic than, than Clemens. Clemens is very boxy and doesn't move well. So, you know, him moving to the inside is not a thing where like, oh, he's, he's an athletic 280. So he's going to be able to outmaneuver these guys. It's like, no, you kind of just made him uh, an unathletic guy in terms of his movement skills, less athletic, and then put him against guys who are going to be able to outmuscle him. It's like, what was the point of that? I'll never know. And I said that prior to them even doing it. I don't understand why they did it. And it didn't work. So it, to, to me, Clemens should drop weight and just stay at the end. You know, Kim Law was definitely solid. 100%. 100%. Uh, shadow. Yes, I did. If you want me to repeat it quickly, I will just let me know in the chat. I'm, I'm, I'm seven minutes behind, so I'll see it in two seconds. So part one, I can't read it. I'll go to the next one. Part two, Peyton. <laughs> no, uh, part one, uh, 97 draft. We got our number one overall, uh, pick uh, Archie Manning tells Parcells. If you promise to take, yes, Peyton at number one, I've heard this. He'll come out. If not, he's going to uh, go back to Tennessee. Parcells says, I can't promise that. Uh, Peyton goes back to Tennessee jets trade number one overall to the Rams. who take hall of famer, Orlando pace. We take, uh, James Farrier later. Yep. Uh, imagine if Parcells agreed and we had Peyton during the whole Brady era. Yeah, man. How little things, how little things could change the entire course of, of history, you know, that, you know, drafting any one of the quarterbacks who are available, you know, the Warren Sapp thing, obviously that's not the biggest difference as, as, as getting, you know, Peyton Manning, but, um, yeah, there's so many what ifs with the jets, you know, and, and this is obviously less, less. So what if Blau Powell was healthy, week 17 in 2015 what if chris ivory was was healthy like didn't didn't chris ivory like not play at all he came in for like one rep ran it for like 50 yards and then was benched again and we're sitting in the stands like why are they not playing this guy like he was he was injured but he just came in and ran a 50 yard you know a 50 yard uh, uh run so like is he not healthy is he healthy so yeah the, the what ifs will kill you what if murdog what if aaron Rodgers was healthy last year like there's so many things man don't bring up more stuff um, so Latham isn't good enough to, to, to start over Moses. Um, I don't think it's a thing where he's not able to start over Moses. It's just a thing where Moses is already a solid tackle. And like right now, okay, again, Nikoi, gun to your head. Latham, a rookie, or Moses, who in my opinion is a solid starting right tackle. I'm not saying elite. I'm not saying great. I'm saying solid. You know, even, even average, solid to average. He's somewhere in that. Let's say 12 to 18 range of right. Not, I think 18 is disrespectful. He's in that 12 to 16 range of, of right tackles. What is the chance that Latham in year one is going to be a average to plus average starter? Realistically, even if it's even if it's an okay chance, okay, then you're replacing you're replacing solid with solid. Like, what's the point? Now, long term, I get it, but it's not a thing where like Moses is so bad that Latham's going to come in and be like, holy shit, he's so much better. It's like if if Latham came in year one and played to Moses's level. That would be an impressive rookie year. If you're an average tackle in your rookie year, that's a good year for a rookie. So you're hoping for him to be as good as Moses? You know, I'm not saying he can't start over Moses. He can come in and be a, a stud right off the jump, but I, I'm not going to bet on that. You know? Let's see. Um... I'm assuming if you take a receiver in round one, Bakhtiari is a must. Yeah, Bakht I'm not, I'm not going to take Bakhtiari necessarily, David, but one of Bakhtiari, Smith, uh, Fleming, one of those guys, yeah, I would I would say. One of those guys. Uh, how creative do you think they'll get with Redick, uh, like Sam linebacker, dropping in a coverage spy, et cetera? Pin his ears back, dude. Like, why? Why do all that shit? Like, if you're really trying to get fancy and do all the spies and all that, like, bring in Sherwood to, to be a spy. Like, he he moves relatively well. Like, he could be a spy. If you want to drop him into coverage, like, once or twice a game, you know, because you're running, like, some type of, like, radar defense or and, and, uh, and like, you're blitzing guys from, like, unknown spots and he drops, okay, like, once, twice a game, sure. If you're going to have him drop back and, like, wall off a, a drag route, okay, sure, fine. But like 99% of the time, let's let the really good pass rusher rush the passer, right? Like, let's not try to get too fancy. So yeah, every once in a while, but I'm not, I'm not getting fancy very, very uh, often. 
Gus Edwards is on the Chargers. Is he? Chido? Let me see. Gus Edwards. You might be right. I haven't kept up. Gus Edwards. Oh, son of a bitch. Okay. Yeah, you're right. He is on the Chargers. So free. I, I think I, I'm in, I looked up free agent running backs. Okay. Give me Jarek McKinnon. Has he really fallen off that hard? I don't know. He's always been okay when I watched him. Um, Stu said Murdoch never heard that story. I heard something else. I heard Peyton did not want to play for New York. I've heard I've heard what Murdoch has said before. Um, so I'm not conf- I'm not saying I guaranteed a thousand percent right, but I've heard other people say that as well. So maybe Murdoch is just um, a liar and he has he has backup liars. You know, let's see. Uh, Nikoi, I think this is the first time I've ever seen you, Nikoi. So uh, thank you for being new or changing. I don't know if you change your username or whatever, but um, thank you for doing this good stuff. I appreciate it. Uh, again, I will be having co-host back and uh, and all of that. So if you don't like the solo stuff, I will have co-host um, at least two or three times a week. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing call-ins too. I want to interact with you guys a little bit um, as long as it works out. If I start doing call-ins, there's like one lonely. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, I don't care. Maybe I shouldn't. There's like one guy calling in, you know, but if you guys call in, I'll do it. I'll do it. You just never know until you do it. You know, maybe I'm being insecure. Maybe people are like, oh yeah, of course I'll call in. I know, uh, I know, uh, Dana was saying like, yeah, Collins for sure. So I know Dana is going to call in or maybe, maybe not. He just wants to see people calling. Okay. Um, a couple more chats. I take the best offense tackle at 10, not betting on getting Bakhtiari. I know his injuries, but he's an all pro. Um, I know I doubt his competitiveness. Let's sign, let's sign him as a backup. I take best offense tackle not betting on getting Bakhtiari. Yeah, I don't think it's Bakhtiari or a bust, but like, why can't we get, again, Donovan Smith or Fleming? You know, so. Or Rashman getting. Okay, you got it. Okay. I, I get into it pretty late. Pretty late, Shadow. But yeah, I, I appreciate you making me not go over that again. Uh, You guys are talking about, I think, the sack exchange. I guess I wouldn't draft tackle at 10 if he isn't better than Moses. That's the, that's the thing, too. And like, even, and that's, and that's Latham, I think, is relatively like pro ready. So let's even go, let's take this a step farther, Nikoi. If if that's how you say it. Um, it's just like Nick Nico Y. Uh, but take a step farther. It, and even if it's like even if it's Latham, Fatanu, Fuaga, you know, Fashanu, whoever it is, what is the chances that that player, and this is again maybe being a little bit like more towards the size of like positivity in terms of like this guy's health, but like what is the chance that they're gonna be better than Bakhtiari year one? If Bakhtiari is healthy, like almost zero. Um, Donovan Smith, you know, uh, probably better, but how significantly better? I don't know how much better than, and I like, if you tell me right now, gun in my head, I'm, I'm taking Fleming over, over Donovan Smith. So like how much better is Fatanu Fuaga Fashanu over Cam Fleming year one right now? Like realistically being, being somewhat realistic with what we've seen from tackles in year one, even guys like Andrew Thomas, um, who I actually didn't, I didn't, I didn't like because he had, I think he had some a few technical flaws to work out. He came in and sucked in year one and then was dominant after that. Um, but he was a guy who was a good player now and he had to adjust his first year. So, you know, I, I just don't think there's that much of a difference in terms of level of play from backup tackle to the tackle you're getting round one. Long-term, completely different discussion. I'm talking about 2024 Jets. You know, Beckton and Wirfs, pretty good rookies. Yeah, um... Becton, if you're talking about Becton year one versus Moses, like last year in his play, like I think, and I don't think I'm just saying this because Becton's gone now. I think Becton's first year was quite overrated. Um, Becton did allow like seven, eight, nine, ten sacks his rookie year. It's not like he was just outright dominating guys. Like he was good, but he wasn't like some next coming, in my opinion. Maybe I'm maybe I'm being harsh because he's not on the team now. But uh, Josh Proctor with pick. Two. Okay, sure. Yes, Josh Proctor. Do it. Uh, Joe, did you hear Sauce said he plan the plan is for him to travel? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm excited about that too, just to see how it affects the defense. And obviously, like you want your best re- your your best corner to play against the best receiver. Um, he, they did it like a few times last year. Um, I think like he he moved inside with Keenan Allen. Um, at times, I think he moved inside with Darren Waller at times with the Giants. Um, there might have been another game where he moved inside a little bit. You know, year one he did it with Mark Andrews. He did it with some play. Maybe uh, there was a rep or two with Kelsey against the Chiefs. So he's done it a little bit, but not as much as he should. Like the Cowboys game, you know, you have freaking uh, CD Lamb who shredded us in the slot and 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 sausage is never on him. Like, why? So yeah, I, I love it. I, I love it. I saw that day too. I should have brought that up, but uh, good uh, good call out. Thank you for uh, bringing that up. Uh, early, so I take a quarterback. Maybe realistically, like I. Am I going to lose my shit if it's a guy in the fourth round? No. Do I prefer it? 
Again, no, but I would say fourth round. I would, I would say the fourth round from kind of like, ugh, come on, like maybe there's a good running back there or something like that, but I'm not going to like lose it. You know, I'm not going to lose it. So I'll say fourth round. Um, Stu says, humor me for a second. Um, if we if we are all in, then let's go all in in 2025, 2026, first, second, third round picks for an additional first, second, and third. The, pro- the problem is like if you trade a first this year, it's kind of like worth a second next year in terms of like the trade value chart and all that stuff. So you're trading – future higher capital for lesser capital this year so at a certain point it's 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 kind of like it's kind of diminishing like you're diminishing too many assets i'm willing to give up some assets of next year but i'm not willing to just give up hey you know i don't know let's say let's i i can't even make a good comparison here like next year's first second third gets us a second third fourth fifth like it kind of everything drops down around so i'm not just going to be willing to say hey give everything up but if you're talking about hey giving giving up next year's 30th pick or hopefully 32nd pick for a guy who people think is legitimately going to be, you know, the, the next chase Julio Jones type prospect, more than willing, more than willing. I wouldn't mind dropping to 12, 13 and getting on those third. All depend on who's on, who's on the board. If, if the board falls where all the receivers are off the board and then it's like Bowers and Latham are there in terms of my top two guys. Okay. Trade down, trade down. I'm okay with either one of them after I tell no lies. Great show. As always, I appreciate that. Jets afterburners. I think, uh, Dan, right? I think I think this is Dan's pod. I, I could be mistaken. Um, Dan, I think you might have changed your name, but I'm sure I'll link up with you guys later in the offseason or just you. I think it's just a you thing now. I don't know if it's the other guy as well, but nonetheless, um, which player at 10 would make you pull your hair out in disgust? So I talked about this before, Mega Vegan. It's not even because of the player. It's more because of the discussion around the player. I think Bowers could be a good player. Dealing with all the shit after Bowers is drafted to the Jets is just a, a world I do not want to live in because, again, I know I'll get... I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be, well, you can listen at the end of the day, you guys can defend me. I see some people on Reddit defending me and stuff. So I know you guys will be like, dude, Joe never said that. So as long as you guys defend me, we're good. But I, I hate the, uh, the Joe thinks he's a fourth round prospect type thing with Bowers. It's just, it's just stupid. I never said that. Not once. They even close to saying that. Just like JJ. So, okay. Let's see. Uh, Joe back had like th- below three average games his rookie year. Rest of the year, he was very good. Yeah. Yeah. Th- th- no, no. So I'm not saying he was good his rookie year, Harold. I'm saying he was not elite his rookie year. He was good. For sure good. He also got his ass kicked versus the Bills a little bit versus like somebody who was a relative nobody. He got his ass whipped versus Cleveland Farrell for the Raiders, who was a bust at that point. So like he had some he had some pretty bad games as well. So yeah, it, uh, again, I'm not saying he was bad. I'm just saying he was not great. He was good. He was good. It's fine. Uh, Bruce says, uh, I, I voted nay for the Collins. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's going to be later on in here. Yeah. No, Murdoch, uh, Friday, Friday, definitely Collins. I gotta, I gotta, I've been here for two hours already, so I can't start doing Collins now. My wife would kill me. Julio is still available. Drop Lazard and bring him in. No, no, no. Yes, sir. Uh, at New York Jets, Dan and Liam. I don't know if I'm familiar with Liam, but I know, uh, Dan, cause I've been on your podcast before. So, okay. Um, I gotta go, uh, Thursday night. I'll be back. Uh, I don't know what time it's going to be. I know like, let's talk jets. I know I'm, I'm sure Jake does a stream. I'm sure I know Ryan's doing a stream. So, um, if you want to stop over here, great. I'd greatly appreciate it. I'll be on probably like pick 15, 16 to 20 ish, probably for the next, like, I don't, I don't know, hour or hour two or three. I think that the last time I was pretty hammered and I think I ended up like trying to order McDonald's. It didn't work out. Uh, it was really, really bad. I watched back. I was like, embarrassed. I watched like, the first five minutes. I'm like, I am slurring so hard. With that being said, I was embarrassed last time. I'm doing it again this time. <laughs> it's going to be fun. I'm up. I'm going to be with my buddies. Uh, so I'm going to come on second half of the first round. Uh, day two, I'm going to be streaming and I'm going to do Collins the entire time. Day three, we'll see. I might jump on at the end. I know I'm going on Ryan's stream at some point and talk about the draft and all that stuff. Um, so I appreciate you guys. Again, uh, watch out for those streams. I'll be on Jake Aspen tomorrow. At 10 a.m., I'll be on Dom C's show at 8 o'clock on Sunday. I'll be on Connor's show on Sunday at 7. Uh, and then Let's Talk Jets on Monday at 8, I believe. So check me out there. I'll see you guys soon. Uh, appreciate you, and hopefully.